one, boys. Yeah, the other one seems a bit dark. dark. I like how. I I like how he has his little brand thing. Everywhere, you got to you got to brand everywhere. Magic Touch Barbers. Magic Touch Barbers. He just doesn't want people to think. It is Magic Touch Barbers, man. It's a form of marketing. You know what's funny? This is the first time I've ever heard you say that. What? Magic Touch Barbers? It is nowhere. It is everywhere. No, what's going Because we see the logo, but the logo has always been Mandy the Barber. Yeah, there was a rebrand. You, you the logo. <laughs> <laughs> that's a rebrand. My guy rebranded with the same logo <laughs> and the same acronyms. So even if it says MTB, with that magic touch. Any, anytime we see an MTB, it's always going to be Man the Barber. No, 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 no. That's that's what it is. Like if you see it that way, that's how you see it now. But once we hit that national scale, okay, it's going to be Magic Touch Barbers. Once there's a MTB, once there's a Magic Touch Barbers in town, Magic Touch Barbers in. Tala, Magic Touch Barbers in Galway, Cork, yeah. then you're not gonna, you're gonna forget all about me. Cause I'm still never gonna say I'm going to Magic Touch. I'm yeah, yeah, I'm going to Magic Touch. <laughs> oh, no, you, you can say I'm going to MTVs, you know what I mean? You can say I'm going to MTVs. You have oh, to say I'm going to Manny, man. <laughs> Why did you want to rebrand though? Um, I don't know. I just felt like obviously I'd like to potentially franchise my um, business. Mm. So I just go for a more like commercial name, not really like, I want to kind of detach myself from the business eventually, you know what I mean? I hear that. So just to, yeah. Do you not feel like, in the day and age we live in, it's like you can be, be the brand, not like the entity is a brand. Like, say, for example, the Joe Budden podcast, because the Joe Budden was the brand of the podcast. So he mm. put his name on the podcast so people know what it was. I know he wrote this co host the wrong way, but mm. for yourself now, you see, that's, that's just what I'm particular about rubbing people off the wrong way. Because, you know, it's all like a, it's a psychological thing. Yeah. At the same time, people are going to work for you, but you don't want them to think that they're working for, for you. you. You yeah. kind of want them to be like working with each with other, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And it's a concept that people can't really grasp sometimes, like, mm-hmm. oh, I'm working with this guy. No, just because it's called Manny the Barbers, or I'm working for Manny, uh, no, I'm working for the company. I get or it. I'm making I, you do, it's, it's, always, it's always one of the boys that uh, you work for Manny, show up, man, before, yeah. he, t- before yeah. he fires you. <laughs> 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 Dude, that's how egos get involved. <laughs> now, why, why is the show called MTV? Is <laughs> 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 have, have you? Have you had dealing with employees? Has that been tough? Uh, yeah, it's been challenging. It's been, it's been interesting. Like, yeah, it's been tough as well. You know, just having to deal with stuff. Like, like I had one barber, and he was just going and coming and going and coming and going and coming, and eventually I just had to say like, enough is enough, mm. which is tough for me because I needed stuff at that point. But you just need to set a tone with people just to let them know that this is how things is going to be run. It's all about setting the tone, to be honest. Yeah. If you set the wrong tone, it could just ruin everything. You know what I mean? But if you set a tone where there is, like, a hierarchy, and you're not just... Uh, just because I'm young as well, some of my yeah. staff members be older than me. If they're not older than me, we're very close to age. You know yeah. what I mean? Mm. So you really have to set that tone that there is a hierarchy. You know what I mean? Like, I deal with all the bullshit of the business. Mm-hmm. You just clock out when we close. You know what I mean? So I can do this. You can't do this. You know that type of way. Yeah, Cause sometimes so important. See, exactly. Because sometimes they'll be thinking that these are like... Like, like we're equals. Yeah, we're equals, but like that's just you see, not you see, the case. You see that sign? That's my name up there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it's not. It's my name. You're not even that impulsive. Like Logan Paul and his co-host, he'll say that to uh, Mike May, like, he'll be like, yeah, it's called Impulsive. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> so like... it's my name mm, up there. You so you have to... I did with all this... It's my name that carries the yeah, brand forward. And I, because of yeah. that, I also have to deal... Like, to, to whom much is given, much is uh, required. Mm. So because my, it's my face there, I have to deal with the bullshit, and I have to deal with the ins and outs and, and negativity. You, when your, your shift's over... Bro, yeah, if the shop burns down, you even damn near don't care. Yeah. Even if, bro, that's the thing. I have a lot more to lose. Even my reputation, if one of the barbers does a bad haircut, mm. they don't hear it. I hear it. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's my reputation, so. Yeah, that's why I book straight with you, so. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have to look anywhere else. It's you. Now, you sorry, Dave, you go Yeah, ahead. I also, I also feel like with, with people as well, it's just like, 
because we're cool, we might have gone to school together, we might have gone to college together. Mm, mm, now mm. you think we're boys. And if I'm asking you, if I'm telling you to do something, I'm not asking, I'm telling you. I'm there's telling a difference. You. Yeah, <laughs> do you yeah, get what I'm yeah. saying? Like, because if you were if you were in the nine to five, you wouldn't you wouldn't say, I'm not doing that. Mm. Well, because it's because you see me as just money. Yeah. Now all of a sudden I'm not doing that. Yeah. Yeah. Or you want to beef me. The, di- oh. the, the, the yeah. dynamic, that dynamic, because you're saying you, you probably, I don't know, do you hire people that you know of or know? Because sometimes they say familiarity breeds disrespect. Yes. Like, to Deji's point, it could kind of be easier for like, I know him, like, I don't have to do that. Do you? How do you yeah, like um, I'd hire people that I know of, and I, like I'm like you know like I'm a friendly guy. Like we become good mates. You know what I mean? Like hanging out with each other after work and stuff like that to the point where you know like we're just like we're friends now. Now, so sometimes that's where like maybe like the disrespect could come in because they feel like we're mates. But yeah. at the end of the day, like I said, I have a lot more to lose than you. You know, I pay the bills or the shop. I pay your wages, that kind of thing. So you can't really think we're at the same level not even that i took the risk to develop a platform for us to grow from you yeah. know what i mean i'm not saying that you're not helping me out you are helping my business grow but i'm also helping you grow as well so it's just you know it's kind of <coughs> yeah because obviously i'm in your shop uh, uh, often now and the mm. one thing i wanted to get you on the podcast because you always talk to me about like being an entrepreneur and entrepreneurship and everybody thinks being your own boss is a glitz and glamour and for me once i clock out that friday that's it. But you t- you told me a story about that you were chilling on your day off and then the water. Yeah, I was chilling on my day off. Like, oh, I was oh, I needed this day off, man. And I was chilling. I was just on my phone, wherever TikTok, laughing. I get a call from the lady next door. We share the same back, but not the same bathroom. This is in the Drada branch. She says that she just came in to do some painting. It was her day off as well. Mondays is generally the day off for some businesses, anyways. Um, so she came in to do some painting, and she says that water was pissing out through the my bathroom. And then she went in and she seen that the boiler was burst. And I was just like, oh, bro, I just, I, just, I just can't catch a break, man. Like, you know, I just can't, it, wasn't, it was like 12 p.m. My day had even just, only just started, bro. You know, I, you're I, looking forward to, oh, bro, I'm, I ain't doing shit today. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, I was in bed to, like, to 12 p.m. I was just chilling, like, and then I had to make my way down, sort that out. So I sorted it out. No, I called the plumbers in, and um, they were gone before I even came. And all they did was just turn the water off, and then they sent me the invoice. Oh, crazy, fam! <laughs> crazy. I, 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 I had a mate that was a plumber, bro. Bro, crazy. I, you know what? Fair play to them. They did the years for the trade, but bro, call out prices are not cheap, bro. Bro, they will, they will say, oh yeah, that's what's wrong. One hundred fifty. Bro, <laughs> <laughs> they fix it. Then. <laughs> bro, and then they told me how much it was to fix it. So I was like, ah, oh, damn. And then they fixed it. Something went wrong because I think our plumbing is connected. Then. Her shower broke because she's a dog groomer's, so her shower broke. So she's looking at me now. Before she even said anything, I was like, send me how much it is. I had to pay for her shower, then refix the issue. And oh, it's just it's just crazy. Like these are the things that people don't yeah. and you this know is why I mean? you're not on the same level. You Bro, they <laughs> <laughs> no, they just see because I say it to you, like, they just see two they just see the two shops. And yeah. I look, oh, look how entrepreneurs and they see your you're very good with the socials as well. So yeah, they yeah, yeah. Things. And but obviously. I'm sitting in the chair. I'm hearing all these stories, and I'm like, "Yeah, if something was wrong at my company, it's, like, it's literally none of my business." Yeah, I will yeah. see you, man, on Monday. Bro. Whatever's happening over this weekend. We also, I expect to be paid on Friday. <laughs> 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 like, that, like, like, I don't care what's happening here. Yeah, pay yeah. me when it's time to pay yeah, me. Yeah, mm-hmm. like, bro, because you know, it's because I, because obviously my mom owned the shop for years, so like, I kind of saw the other side. Yeah. Like people, people will see the oh, he's cutting a shaker's hair. Oh, he's like, he's going on holiday. He's doing this. He's doing this. He's doing this. They'll see you, and you know. It's weird. Other people get gas when people call you CEO and they go, oh, money. Yeah. It's like, bro, that's the only fun part about it. Bro. <laughs> <laughs> the day to day. Bro, literally, like bro. My, mom, my mom's shop got robbed on my birthday. Mm. Like, literally, I get there, everything is smashed. They, t- they took a bunch of shit. I'm just looking at her like, bro, this is crazy. I wasn't even expecting a present at that point. She's like, yeah, yeah, did you go buy your tail? I was like, oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and she still has to deal with the yeah, 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 yeah. She started to open the shop. She started to deal with the people. She started to pay bills. She started to do everything. And it's like, it doesn't stop. Mm-hmm. And also, you like, you know, because like my mom, it, during Christmas time as well, it used to get so busy. So mm-hmm. there's been times she's not leaving the shop to 1 a.m., 2 a.m. because she's doing people's hair. Mm-hmm. And it's just like, people don't see that. They only see that, ah, you must be enjoying shit. And it's just like... Bro, that's the thing about owning your own business. You see the way you say you clock out <laughs> on Friday at 5 o'clock. I don't clock out. You sometimes have one. I don't clock out. I was on the way up here with Deji. I was still getting calls. You know what I mean? If I don't pick those calls up, that's money going out the window. You know what I mean? Mm. But it's just about setting a system to make it easier for yourself. Like I was reading something. I was like, like a lot of people think like, okay, I won an award for entrepreneur of the year. 
cool. I'm gas. You know, my hard work is being recognized. I wouldn't call myself an entrepreneur yet. Why? I'm an entrepreneur is someone that makes money, sets up business, makes money passively. I'm self-employed. I've set up a business for myself to work within. You know what I mean? Yes. It, it might, I might be a bit harsh on myself saying that, but you don't see, um, you don't see flipping Mark Zuckerberg working behind the till or uh, Facebook or whatever. That was a poor example, but you know what I'm trying no, to no, say. No, like, saying, yeah. You know, you know still, what I'm trying to you're say. You're still very much on the ground. I'm still floor very much hand, I'm still them. very much hands on. Yeah, yeah. So I feel like until I'm hands off, that's when I deserve the title as an entrepreneur. entrepreneur. But bro, I'm giving myself four days a week, five days a week. Yeah, within my own business, I'm self-employed. Loki, you you're kind of hands off though. You can't because you physically can't be in both shops at, okay, at one yeah, time. Yeah. So one of them is running. Alternate, one of them like, is yeah, yeah. One of them. Well, you, you alternate between. I the alternate two. between the two, but technically, I just alternate between the two just to keep the balance. I feel like there is one of the shops, like the Dundalk branch, has been there for the like a year and I think nine months now, almost two years, and I feel like I can literally just leave that alone. I have enough staff, enough clientele coming in rotation to just leave that alone. But I live in Dundalk, so it's easier for me to work there as well, and then. I'm, when I'm not working, to be honest, yeah, I say all this, but I'm a workaholic. I actually like working. You know, that's what I mean? one thing so, I wanted to say as well, yeah, like, about you, because like some, I sit there and then you're saying that like, oh, give people advice, give people this, and I'm like, bro, the way I see you, anyways, you have work ethic. You can give people all the knowledge there, mm. but will they have the drive within on the their day off to, to go to go into the shop to yeah. run between two shops and consistently do that and to never switch off? Yeah, a lot of people. They don't have that right. So it's not it's not the information or the knowledge that makes people sometimes. It's like, mm -hmm. are you willing to do it when you're like, today's my day off, I'm doing nothing, or I just want to sit here, I'm not gonna answer any calls, I'm doing a podcast today, but no, you're still on it. A lot, a lot of people they don't they don't have the drive. So I don't even think information will help everybody. Yeah. Kind of but that's because people still don't understand. Like being an entrepreneur is not for everybody. Do you yeah. get what I'm saying? Like 100%. it's a it's for a very specific kind of person. And I know we live in this place, oh have multiple streams of income and do this and do this and do this, but Bro, do you not have to go to your 9 to 5 and then come home and then do more work and then go... Bro, fuck that. Like, yeah. But even before, because like obviously now people see Manny's got a shop in the dock, he's got a shop in Dryda. Like, let's go back to the shed and how you started from there. Like. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the shed, it was crazy times. Um, Basically, the way it started was... I was just cutting for... Nah, there was one shop. Did you hear from that? Remember Pablo's shop? On Flower Hill. Flower Hill. Oh, stop <laughs> <laughs> Bro, so obviously... No damn times, like, I always say it as well. Kids of these days are so privileged, bro. Have you seen YouTube? That's why you niggas are soft. Bro. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up, man. <laughs> bro, have you seen these youths coming in? Getting sh I'm giving them sharp shape up to go. They're probably in, like, like fifth, fifth class even. You yeah. know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Bro, back then, there was one level that my dad would grab my head with and scrape my head oh, off. Oh, boy. Of, <laughs> scrape my head off. <laughs> and, then, and then I'm walking to school... And I get into school, and all the elders that see me were like a fresh, fresh bob head there. <laughs> up in the hand, getting ready to. <laughs> straight. <laughs> no, we, they, there's, there's too much trauma in this room. How can we do all at the same time? <laughs> bro, no. Bro. Because then when you become the elder, you do it to them. As well. Bro, you do it to them as well. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> but I was, uh, I was at that point where I finally said to my friends, I want to I wanna, I wanna get my haircut. Yeah, I, I'm gonna get my haircut. <laughs> <laughs> and then they're like, "Okay, you know, what? we gave you." And I got shape up, and I was, I was mesmerized. I Life said, was changed, bro. I said, "Wow!" And then I just started hanging around that that barbershop, even when I wasn't getting my haircut. Say my boys, I put the boys on. You guys come get your haircut, and I always just be around. I'd be watching Pablo. He'd be telling me to move, move, sit down. So I'd be watching him from afar, and I feel like that's kind of how it all started. From there, I just started picking up the clippers myself. You know, whatever we had at home, practicing on my dad and my brother. And then a few of the lads in the estate, I think there was a point where Pablo had left. There wasn't really a barber shop in Navin. So the boys kind of had no choice but to come to me. You know what I mean? Yeah. The industry of barbering in general was very, very, like, it wasn't as strong. It wasn't as what it was now. No, not at all. So, you know, it was easier for me to get into it. I was always getting into it subconsciously because I was always told a barber isn't what you should be. You know, like Especially African parents. Company, exactly. Yeah. African parents have the stimulus of, you know, um, Lawyer, doctor, doctor, engineer. engineer. Yeah, you know what I mean? don't make money. Yeah. Exactly. So <laughs> it was never something that I planned to pursue. It was just something that I was doing out of, um, like, you know, interest and hobby. And my parents were happy with that as well. And so I was cutting for a few of the boys in the kitchen. I started getting a bit busy, getting a bit recognized in the estate, you know. So my parents moved me out to my shed. I wasn't too happy about that because obviously it was in the kitchen, so it wasn't too hygienic. So they moved me out to the shed. I wasn't too happy about it, but I made the best out of a, worse, out of, out of, out of a bad situation. Started making a bit of money from it, you know, renovated the shed, threw some old furniture in that I'd buy off 
whoever in the estate, you know, eventually made more money, bought a TV for the shed, um, set up the wallpaper, you know what I mean? And then the shed just became a spot. And then I started having clientele on rotation. You know, everyone kept coming to my shed to the point that they didn't even need to knock the front door anymore. My parents, my clients knew straight, when he, once you get to my house, straight to the back, straight to the shed, I'm there. And your appointment is this time and you can cut at this time. So that was the rotation. That's how the shed kind of started. And I just kind of, again, I never did it just to like, I never did it to become a barber. I was just doing it for money at the time. And it was a hobby that I liked doing. I basically seen it as I was chilling with the boys, laughing and making money. You know what I mean? Like that, that's basically it, what it was. Than that. And then tell me about <clears throat> how you then, how the first of the pandemic kind of the, uh, changed it. As so, well for you. yeah. And then I brought it to the document because once you get this skill. Oh yeah, because you wanted to move out. That's how it started. Yeah, I wanted to, yeah, exactly. So I wanted to move out, yeah, for college. But African parents, they like to like, they like to have you. Like, I feel like they like, they like to have they, you. They just, you know what? They, they just want to have you. They want to see you. You know what? You can only move out once you have mortgage. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have mortgage, you just stay right there. You know what I mean? No, I hear you. I, don't, I just want to move out, but they just want to have me there. But I was like, like, oh, I'm, big man. I'm making my money now. You know what I mean? I'm like, a big, I'm a big man now, now, you know? Now, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I'm making my opinions now. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to move out. I'm, not, I'm just letting you know. I'm going to move out. I'm not asking. I'm not asking. asking I'm yeah, we're, we're, we we passed that stage though. now. <laughs> you over there. So yeah, I'm about 19 at this stage. Yeah, I'm moving out now. Um, moved out by myself. None of the boys were on there. I said, that's cool. I'll move out by myself. I just wanted that sense of independence. The thing about me is I lived, um, when I grew up, four of us shared the same room. Two bunk beds in one room, one double right. room. So I never had my own space. Mm. So I, even till now, I feel like having my own space is something that I cherish so much. Yeah. And it's something that I always strive for. So I just wanted to move out. And I did move out. And obviously, I was getting the support from, you know, Susie. You know what Susie is, obviously. Um, shout out to Susie, man. Shout out to Susie, bro. I never got Susie. Oh, sorry. You're that's oh, doctor, yeah. man. You're a rich. You're a rich. You're a rich. You that shit. <laughs> but then Susie did a mad thing with my payment. And all of, all of a sudden, they cut me off. And I'm appealing it. But in the meantime, I've already done big guy to my parents and I'm moving yeah. out. And I have a lot of pride. I have a lot of pride. <laughs> so I'm not going to now yeah, go yeah. to... There's no way I'm coming back. Oh, no, no, I'm coming back. <laughs> That's this suit. Oh, bro. Like, nah. like, at least give me a year outside first before I come back. It's a thing out. where I've already paid for the lease, the, the deposit, the one month's rent and deposit. I'm not going to... So I have to live in this house, but I'm not going to come to you guys for money. What am I going to do? What do I know how to do best? Also, Cut hair. So, started shouting the boys in the college. I was doing a few bits before, not consistently because I didn't live there, but I was doing for a few of the boys in the college. Oh, you lot, I'm about. Da, 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 da. But now, I was like, you guys, I'm here now. If you guys want your haircuts, I'm here. You know what I mean? This is just yeah. the boys in the college. But then word just spread very quickly. Like, word just spread very quickly. Apparently, Dundalk was a similar town to Navin in the sense that they needed a barber. Yeah. So, Navin, I, my thing was on rotation because Navin needed a barber and I was that barber. For at that point, within my community, not on a broad scale, just within my community, um, my community was the Afro, you know, the African community, and then that was the exact same thing with Dundalk. That's how I met all the boys in Dundalk that I'm still cool with now to this day. It all started in my first ever student accommodation, and I was just doing it just to survive, basically as a means of survival, just cutting hair, just to um, just to meet rent, to be honest. Yeah. But then it turned into more than that. I had parents bringing their kids in. I had. Just regular people just coming in, like yeah. they just hear like there's this guy in Dundalk now that knows how to cut hair. He lives here, and I was like, "Come, everybody, yeah. everybody, <laughs> come, come." You know, Similar I mean? to Tantine and Barbrigan. Ta mm. We didn't have a barber in Barbrigan. Mm -hmm. mm. Tantine was cutting hair. Like literally, you're 15, 16. Said, so "Who's gonna cut my hair?" Like mm. people start packing themselves in Tantine's house yeah. to a state that the neighbor snitched, so she had she had to, has to do house calls. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because what's called? Because yeah. even even uh, like Navin is weird, but Dundalk's a bit different because they have a uni there. Yeah. So like yeah. everybody's yeah, there. There's so many people there. Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like yeah. clientele is just crazy. Whereas clientele Navin is kind of like that's kind of what pushed me to open in Dundalk just because it's like you know the yeah, fact is like the university it's a bigger town I think it's the second biggest town in Ireland yeah. after Drada so I have a shop in both of the towns okay. that would be the biggest towns in Ireland and, and I someone snitched on me in Navin as well actually so I was kind of like yeah, talk to you guys and also the story that you ha you told one kid to bring their friends yeah yeah so I told one one guy shout out Manny if you're watching this <laughs> <laughs> he knows who he is bro <laughs> big ups to him I, I was cutting his hair I was like bro if you can bring me you know the way some people do, like, bring a friend and get a free haircut? I violate. I said, if you could bring me six people, you get a free haircut. And he's like, six? 
bro. You know when you're in secondary school, you know everybody. Yeah, because, yeah, because, you, <laughs> because you're right there with everybody. Exactly. So yeah. you have access to so many people. You're you're saying you're six. Light work, man. Bro, so that's my PE class. The, the next up, day, money came through with an army of boys. <laughs> 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 yes, lads. Like, <laughs> yes. So wait, it's like, that's 12, so two, yeah? yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you can hold that, bro, of course. But I was giving him and his brother Michael because he was bringing people in as well. I was giving them free trims for a minute just because they were bringing so Can much I people, bro. Yeah. And then that's really what aided to my growth as well in Dundalk. So, man, if you're watching this, Appreciate you, bro. <laughs> <laughs> so that that's what aided to my growth in Dundalk as well. It really helped me boost it up a lot quicker. And um, yeah, then things just kicked off from there. Everything was going good. And then lockdown hit, bro. Lockdown was crazy. I was like, damn, um, what's going to happen? I didn't really take lockdown too serious. You know, I'm very like, I'm just like, this can't be happening. You know what I mean? Mm. Then it happened. Like, you know, I was in uni. I was in my final year of uni, actually. And because that was the main reason I moved out to focus on uni. And it got to a point where ugh, I was cutting so much hair. This uni thing was looking It long. wasn't making sense. It was, I, was, I was looking <laughs> long. I had a lot of lecture and I had seven guys that wanted trim. <sighs> how, how much am I going to make in that lot of lecture? How am I spending <laughs> this next few hours? <laughs> bro, like, because, bro, I miss, I miss college, for, I miss class for table tennis. Yeah, bro. <laughs> <laughs> we miss class for less. I miss you class because my boy is in, I'm about to go, but my boy walks in this. SU. SU. Ah, there you go. Oh, there you go. Like, ah, I mean, I was supposed uh, to go. I, to I guess nowhere. No. What, what are you saying, though? <laughs> so, uh, I have no lecture in an hour. I'm like, I don't have no lecture in an hour either. <laughs> so you're telling me can I can miss a lecture, which I was going to miss anyways. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'd make money. I'll make for money. college, man. Bro, bro, college slowly became a myth. I was scraping. I was just about passing the CAs. I was just getting the four E's. You know what I mean? I was passing by compensation. And yeah, I was got to a point where I clutched first semester so it's february now we've got our results <sighs> <laughs> i did it lads there's another semester to go and then i was like but damn this semester is looking long i'll be real like it's looking so long then covid hit and it's just like okay what's gonna happen with college now college came online Bro, ah, uh, that was the easiest degree I've ever gotten. Bro. Honestly, I'm, I would have been upset. I would have failed. Boys, I don't know how. I, I don't even know how I have a diploma. <laughs> oh, wow, <laughs> diploma! Wow, <laughs> crazy. Wait, what's, um, your, what's your degree in? Uh, bachelor's business. Yeah. I, 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 I think business is the is the stupidest. It's the worst. It's the, it's the it's worst the thing worst. because business it's business. business. It's, you don't it's, need it's college for it. It's, it's full of people. Like and, geography uh, and English. I don't want to offend anyone that's studying business and takes it serious, but it's full of people that have no idea what they want to do. Bro, yeah. it's just it's just like I arts. I wanted to do business. Because I had no idea. What no I idea. That's, that's my dad was like, what are you going to have to do in business? Like, yeah, because good, good question. Business, <laughs> very good question. Bro, bro. business and no arts are the, are the two most, I don't know what the fuck I want to do. Bro, Let yeah. me just do those, are the, those are the top two on my CEO. <laughs> <laughs> those are the top two on bro. my CEO. Let me figure it out. <laughs> business, because like, I have the shit they teach you. Like, you've, you've probably learned more actually doing business than you did in your whole bro. thing. Because they teach you a bunch of theory that's you know, not actually useful. Yeah. Even education in general. Do you know, only last week, I learned about fixed and flexible mortgage rates. Okay. Just last week. For that, you could just literally uh, DM Dami and you would have told me. Bro, I didn't know it was yeah, a th- thing. Th- th- these, people th- are, these people are t- teaching you this how you write a check. Bro, who uses checks? <laughs> Bro, oh, like I feel like they just didn't teach me. Like even I'm in business now, it, it didn't teach me anything. I remember actually asking that. I was like, is there any knowledge? Actually, you could, yeah, there, yeah, there, there is. is. Let me not violate too much. There is. Yeah, there's certain things. Because like, like I'm, when I found myself doing a business plan for the second shop, Hey, this is all familiar, you yeah, know. You know, SWOT analysis. SWAT, came. I said, SWOT, what is that? Strengths? I've, I've learned this somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's that module like that time. I uh, Maybe yeah. I wasn't the best student, yeah. so let me not violate business altogether. I think th- college, for the most point now, is just a, uh, to show an employer that, like, look, I did something for four years and I was able to stick through with it and mm. I can accomplish goals and I can accomplish things and I can be organized and I can. For, the, for a lot of it, it's that. It's not the only way, though. I know a cares. guy, yeah, he works for Google. And I forgot his role, but he hires engineers. Yeah. And I go to him, what did you study in college? He goes, I didn't. I said, well, how'd you get here? It was <laughs> yeah, waffle. But, but that's because you know what now, waffle, yeah. Yeah, no, like, I need to talk, yeah. You know, you know what now, like, every, like, before... Uh, degrees were so like just kind of like they were like for the elite that like not yeah. a lot of people had them yeah. but now everybody and their own class has a degree yeah. bro what's called you know one of the boys you know you know i don't want to say his name but you know the boy he used to live he used to live he used to live in my estate your boy your boys with you what's called 
I'm not. Anyway, no, no, sorry. His, da- his <laughs> dad collects. <laughs> his dad has an undergrad in accounting, a master's in computer science. He wants to do a PhD in something else. Bro, people are collecting degrees for banter. Yeah. Like, it just, um, it, just it, it doesn't mean anything anymore. So, but like, if you can prove that you know how to do the work yeah, and you know somebody that knows somebody that knows somebody, bro, that's what yeah. you really need. Degrees just I'm showing that I, I've, I've stuck something out for If you. anything, the best that's thing to do when you go to college is network. 100%. Mm. Meet, meet people. Especially if you go to all those like rich colleges like Trinity and DC or not, meet people that can help you after, bro. That's and just lock in with them. That's what's more important about college. That's more. That's the who most. You know? who, who you know? Yeah. More who you know? Literally. Right, let me plug in a quick intro because there's still a lot that I want to get into. But let's cool. introduce the podcast today. Anyways, anyways, and we are here. We are charged to the game. This is the podcast with the highest level of analysis the culture needs. I'm Uncle Jay, but you man's call me Jordan, and I'm here with. You know, it's your girl's favorite voice, Big Ditch nigga with the Midas touch. <laughs> 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 you know, I can always tell people that don't listen to the money. <laughs> when they hear that was the intro for the first time, wait up, wait up. <laughs> <laughs> the girl's from voice. Yeah, man. Yeah, okay. Who you know? okay. <laughs> we got here today? And we got Mindy the Barber. Mindy the Barber. Mm. Magic, magic Touch. Magic, magic Touch. 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 Magic Magic Touch. 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 Magic not anymore. That's my loyal barber now. Mm-hmm. I was in. I was a Tantin for years. So you I'm divorced Tantin? Yeah, I divorced Tantin. It's just Crazy. more convenient. I can go on the Oyembo man's time, work time, straight after work. I'm down like five minutes away from me. So yeah. You know what? One time, actually, because like I can't remember. I think Izzy was gone somewhere or something like that. And I was like, I need a trim. I text. I text Manny. Manny, are you in Navid? He's like, Nah, I'm in the shop. I just took my. I carried my laptop and I just. Went. <laughs> You well, came to the shop, innit? Yeah, I came to the shop. I was working when I came to the shop. Yeah, yeah, I think I remember that. Yeah, actually. It was, I remember it was like cutting near Christmas time. You, I remember cutting you in my shed as well, though. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. no, right. I remember yeah, you near Christmas shop, time. Yeah. I was like, oh, fuck it, let me just go. Let yeah, me just go, yeah, money yeah, real yeah, quick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, anyways, August 26th, we are. August, is August 26th, yeah? Uh, yes, it is August 26th. Yeah, okay, August 26th, charge your karaoke. Come true, we're having a karaoke night. And it's going to be a bit of a competition, battle of the podcast, and then most importantly, open to the public. Come with your friend, compete with your friends. We're gonna have prices. We're gonna give away uh, giveaways. Obviously, <laughs> we're gonna give you giveaways. So pull up with your boys, with your friends. Come on stage, prove who you're the best, uh, better singer. Did you said he's gonna outperform everybody? everybody on not the day. a single person. Rod says she's ready for the battle. Tommy from Where's Your Head at is battling, and we have the get the gist girl. No, sorry, not get babes the, on tips. The babes on tips girls also battling. I have my own performance. That's gonna be memorable. Mm-hmm. Wait for it. it's gonna be the most Congolese thing everybody has ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> also, we got we got the fucking best band in Ireland, Newbury. Newbury gonna, there as well. They're gonna be uh, doing a, a set for us, best band in Ireland. So come through August twenty sixth. Come have fun with the boys. So mm-hmm. yeah, and what's called like I've been asking every week karaoke song. Good oh, week. I've changed it every week, is it? Yeah. Oh, smile like you mean it. The killers. What the fuck is that? <laughs> No, no, no. Come in, I with my friends, and I was doing just fine. You know, I didn't, I didn't go through that. Wife, wife, wife. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> bro, what was you know what he's saying, bro. Started off with a kiss, and then end up like this. I've it never, was only I've a kiss. never heard. It was only a kiss. Oh, no, you. I've never, never heard a killer song in my life. Oh no, I've heard, I've heard a few. Yeah, my friend, my friend at the time, she used to like a few doors after me. Big fan of them, so yeah. You, know, you nah. go to the house and they just play now, yeah. If you had to do a karaoke, what song would you sing? Uh, is there, is there a little baby or gonna? Hey, of whatever course. you want. Oh yeah, yeah. whatever you <laughs> what, want. What gonna song can you can you do bar for bar, word for word? Drip too hard, don't stand too close. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or sold out dates. Ah, sold out dates. Give me the mic, bro. <laughs> You're ready uh, for that. Give me the mic. You know what? Let me go. Let me go. White people. Paramore. Misery business. Misery business. See, I don't know that song. Oh, banger. <laughs> Congrats. That, that, like that's 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 as far as I know. Misery go business. Go into rock. But that banger. Okay. Uh, see, August twenty sixth. Tell your friend to tell a friend. Be there. Bottle of the podcast mm-hmm. but forget the podcasters they they love being us they do love the attention it's the you that we want to come and have a good time you come with a friend you compete with your friend you sing your eyes out and then we enjoy the new reset at the end so august 26 get your tickets link in the bio of our instagram page also what's called spotify about. link in the bio i think it might be fucked up but if it's not fucked up if it is fucked up send us a message we'll add it to the playlist add it to the playlist. so manny before we continue on i have a quick quiz for you go ahead five questions mm-hmm. how how well do you think you'll do I feel like I'm we just make a leaderboard. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I feel like I'm a smart enough guy. In general knowledge. Uh, I feel right, like I you have right. one lifeline. Your one lifeline is Axe Dig. Okay. So okay. I don't know these questions. So, <laughs> so <laughs> these are five questions. They're not and they're mixed and match. Just general knowledge. Mm. First question: uh, Name the four provinces in Ireland. Um, Connacht, yep. Leinster, Munster, and Ulster. God, That's like come on. Yeah, can we get there? Mm. The Wright brothers are famous for what innovation? Um, um, aviation. Yep, airplane. Yeah. I want to say airplane or aviation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Damn, he's doing good. <laughs> Who won Entrepreneur of the Year at the 2022 Black and Irish Awards? Ooh. 
What was his name again? Yeah, Manny the Barber. <laughs> <laughs> Right. I'll give that. How <laughs> many Champions League final did Sir Alex Ferguson make? Finals. Oh, finals. finals. Not how many did he win? No, no. How many did he win? How many finals did he make? Twelve. That was fi- it's Champions League finals. He made four. And did one. he not win four? No, he won two. Ninety nine. Oh. He won ninety nine. He won two thousand and eight against Chelsea. He lost two thousand and nine against Barcelona. He lost two thousand. I thought he. Barcelona. I thought he won. I'm even United. Twelve. Fans. He won thirteen Premier Leagues. Maybe that's what you're thinking. Mm, Twelve Premier Leagues. Mm. No, he won. He, he won two, made four finals. Ah, uh, so that's because you're a United fan, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. And you like that. Out of all the questions, he asked easy, 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 easy left field. Yeah. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> but this one should be easy as well. Finish the lyric. She got thick, but she wanna get thin again. Um. Drink an apple cider vinegar burn skin because you want to be killing them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I know I had to think of that. <laughs> that song is on repeat in the song. Four in the out of shop. five, four out of five. So I, that was oh, one. Oh. I didn't think you'd get the right brother ones. Don't go like oh, I, Fergie's won oh. the finals. I didn't think you'd get that. Mm. The right brother, you know, it's one of those ones where it's like it's memory that's stored back. Yeah, stored yeah, yeah. Back, so back, I, thought, back. I thought two of them were a bit more difficult. Mm. What was your guys' favorite subject in school? Uh, I started PE. <laughs> Obviously, I was like, <laughs> uh, maths and geography. Uh, and French, obviously. I was good at French. Geography? Oh, it's class and geography. Do you know the waterfall? Hard rock over soft rock. I, I, oh, I, I, no, I, no, I no. could draw that thing to this day. <laughs> I love <laughs> geography. <laughs> Mine was history and junior cycle, though. I never did senior cycle. Yeah, history like and um, uh, French, but I can't speak a bit of French anymore. Yeah. Uh, maths and maybe. You know what? Because. In my senior cycle, I did ordinary level English, and I really liked my teacher. He like he did some fun shit with us. Like, yeah, same so actually. English, Engl- was Engl- English, English and maths, which sounds weird, but yeah, yeah English I was pushing. Yeah, teacher really ha- like has an effect on what's it called. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. what's called because my science teacher, he was so bad, and to this day, I hate everything that does with science. Yeah, yeah like yeah, he was same. just horrible. Like same. this guy would go on a forty minute rant yeah. about some shit that, w- and he'd be like, "Oh, you guys don't even need to know that. That's leaving cert." <laughs> I'm in first year. <laughs> <laughs> I, I like my history teacher because obviously you know you'd have the bold kids in class yeah. and all the teachers would like go on a mental breakdown he used to violate them <laughs> <laughs> and it was just like wow like you'd actually come in and learn because these guys know if I step out of line I'm holding a violation yeah. so now yeah he was cold racist. <laughs> she told us like it's always you people that are the problem Whoa. Wow. She, made us, she says you people don't want to learn so she made us go sit at the back of the class <laughs> Well, what's he, what's so you people? The black and the Polish. <laughs> to be honest, to be honest. Gannon. <laughs> <laughs> to be honest. Back, then, you know. back then I was like sitting at the back, me and Ty were in jellies. I didn't even really deep it. You don't deep it until you're older. I was like, wait a minute. <laughs> what was my, my, my principal was racist. Your principal? My principal was racist, yeah. Like he would say, he said he said to Moyo, like eh, Moyo was being bold or something. He's like, I'll put you in the black book, but no one will be, no one will be able to see your name. Bro, I think I've heard something like that. You guys are pats, innit? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I heard something like, when these are training, because these are a very sporty school, and the lights go off, they're like, ah, lads, come in before we lose you. Bro, <laughs> yeah, I, I heard, like, I, was like I went both for it, so both of us <laughs> far from racist. I, I, if, if anything, we were, we I were the... almost went both for it. What's called, because they didn't let me into pads, and then my mom took me to both for it, and you know, they were like, oh, they brought one of the black kids in, but the guy had an earring, my mom said, nope, and then she took me back to my primary school, got the teacher to, the principal to, I essentially big pats to let me in and then that's let what me in. I remember we all didn't get into like loads of us <laughs> didn't get into like pats and all our parents were like like they were like oh my god how could you like whoa their lives are gonna be because yeah. you know, of both were, like the school had such a bad rep but to be honest to be honest there was hooligans in that school yeah. <laughs> yeah. and also you know what because pat, pats is pats is the trying to be posh only boys school mm. both were, uh, we, we went to both because uh, we uh, on sports day we used to we sneak out and go both for it to go play football get to both for it we see a fight we play football and we go home bro both i, I would have hate to go to pats i feel like there was no crack at it there was there was crack oh, but that, it was oh, different crack. crack like you know what i mean bro both were, oh, bro i've never laughed so much in my life in secondary school yeah i've never i, I was in stitches <laughs> like, <laughs> i was in secondary school like it was like we bro four or five years of my life we it took the piss bro hilarious every time you, you, you didn't it was so good that you didn't want to miss a day of school. Yeah, like you, yeah, you were like, it was actually not, like that. I bro. want to be there today like, because <laughs> what shenanigan can these man can do these man do today, bro? Because obviously, like in parts, you black people were minority in it, bro. There was three every year, bro. Three every year, except one year where 
some guy transferred in, but apart from that, was damn near three every year. Bro, and both of those, like maybe 13 of us that used to stay yeah. together. Yeah, because like, like stay together. Because what's called, for, for the boys, it's either Pats or Beaufort, or you don't go in, don't go in Avon. That was yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, we had, like, when I was going there in Barbrigan at the time, there was two schools. There was Loretta, which was all girls, and mm. there was Tech, the community college. Mm. So Tech? Yeah, I don't know. Every community <laughs> college is called Tech. <laughs> So they um, just said tech, all the boys were there. What, Every what, single one. You're from Barbrig, isn't it? Oh, okay, no, no, man. I think I'm to Drada. Yeah. 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 I only moved to Drada now. Yeah, okay, yeah. It was just because there was only two choices. So all the boys around the same age in Barbrig in that school. Mm. So you couldn't you couldn't be like three every year because like where else were mm. they? Yeah, but what's but what's called like yeah it was it was for it's one of those things that it's not overtly racist, but oh. once you start noticing, right, there's three of us in this year, and there's three of us in that year, and there's three of us in that year, and there's three of us in that year too. So it's weird. And then it's not like nobody's applying because everybody, all Every, the parents are trying to get you in there. Because yeah, 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 that's yeah. the so prestigious one. So how did they pick you guys? Just brother, I don't know. No, no, it was a thing where it's like... If your brother is there, brother if your brother, there, if your brother yeah, goes if your brother there, brother you get, goes there, you get first dibs in it. Mm, and also mm. I think it's because uh, Catholic school is also, if you're Catholic, you also get oh. a bit... Was it mixed? Pro- no, only oh, boys. But both of it was mixed though. Oh, okay. So, but that's where that's where all the hooligans were. Yeah, did you have girl fights at yours? Huh? Did you have the girls fighting? Like yeah, there was be a few girl scraps and all. Oh, yeah, like bro, bro, for anything, scraps. anything went, bro. Like bro. it was like it was, bro. It was like high school. Like there was the goths. There was the like you know the athletes. There was well, I don't know. If this is a section in high school, but there was the niggas, which was us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like that, there's just be like there's the nerds. We even had like, an early LGBT community group. Like they were they, even they exist. Like they were already and obviously you're young, so you don't really understand. Mm-hmm. But these, they're like. And then now you're getting a bit of knowledge of like, oh yeah, these people have always been around. Because I know now because they're, they're it's they're, magnified yeah, upon yeah, them. Yeah, I was yeah. like, I know this one guy, shout out Reese in school. First one I knew, he was really good friends with like a girl I was going out with at the time. Mm. Obviously being black and religious and like you're looking at him a bit, you're kind of like, this, this is making me feel kind of weird and uncomfortable. Mm-hmm. But now mm. that I'm older, I'm like, oh yeah, that no, was, him. That was him. I've seen this character. There was one gay guy in our school, he's a big ginger guy. And he was openly gay, bro. We had gay. so many openly he, gay He people. got bullied too. Yeah. Because obviously, it's, it's, he has no girls to protect him. And it's just all boys school. All boys school. Bruv, so there's not even girls to tell you, yeah, you guys are being immature. No, no, no. I no, think no, that's no. what kept a lot of our boys in line. Mm. The girls getting the ick. Mm-hmm. So, oh, you guys are being Ill- immature. Oh, would you guys ever grow up? Like, oh, yeah, yeah, we, we didn't have that. Us, so we even have to, even, we have to even mature. when we went to both for, for like uh, for sports day, we were in our uniform. We walk past the principal. He's like, oh, you guys don't go here. Leave. And then he just walks past us. And we just keep going. <laughs> like, <laughs> bro. <laughs> Bro, the school was actually fake, bro. Like, oh, no, nah, I loved it. I loved my experience in secondary school. It was great. Well, how come you don't have more, like, o- uh, white friends then if you went to production? Yeah, like, actually. Um, because, boys? what's called? Um, because I didn't <coughs> I didn't really hang out with them outside of school. So mm. we didn't build that relationship. So then when we left school, it's kind of like we parted ways, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Do you get what I'm saying? I hear because I'm the same, but you're also my teammates. In mm-hmm. Like, they also play within the same team, so I still mm. had another avenue to hang around with people that yeah. Like yeah so and and then also like that's why i don't really know any white girls either because like oh, i went to all boys school all boys and school. i didn't hang out in the places where the only boys hung, hung out after makes sense, makes sense. you know what i'm saying so it was just kind of very just, is what it is oh, yeah, yeah so money now you also like run courses and you give tutorials on haircuts so how, how's that how's that going oh yeah so um i started um a while ago was it, like last year yeah i started my educational programs so what I do is basically to, there's a six week barber development program for beginner barbers to and guide them over the course of six weeks on how to become a better barber, how to become a barber. So it's kind of like a jump start into the industry and into seeing if barbering is actually for you as well. So it's kind of a gamble because some people don't get it, but the ones that do do really well in it. Like I, we had a graduate recently, we finished our last one like two weeks ago. I'm watching her progression over the last two weeks and she's been killing it you know what i mean and it was a girl as well so we teach everyone all ages as well once you're serious and it's beneficial for both of us because if you do do well and you're looking for work i'm looking for employment so it's oh, helping me okay. build and it's helped giving you a platform to develop your skills from and make some money from as well so yeah it's a it was a very smart idea that i just came up with because i was just the hardest part about owning a barbershop is staff like you know like i you can't just like Hire anyone with a decent CV or whatever. Or no nice Instagram page. Or, you know what I mean? You need like someone with physical ability and customer service. You know, people that you know, aren't aw- socially awkward and stuff like that because you encounter loads so of people yeah, every day. Yeah, that's one thing about 
you, I'll come in like late after work, like five o'clock, six o'clock, and I can visibly tell that he's tired because he's been on his feet all day, he's been cooling. And I can tell when I'm sitting down, mm. but the minute he starts cutting my hair, he's just chatting as if you couldn't even yeah. tell. <laughs> yeah, 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 he's been yeah. Standing on his feet for the last yeah, six yeah, hours. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Barbers always have great chats because they talk to so many, so much different, different people. people. So I'll tell you day, a bit yeah. about what the last guy told me about a topic that we were discussing, yeah, yeah. and then you give me your input on that. And now, yeah, so like so much, even like it was even crazy when I was at home before I came to the shops. I wasn't just a barber. I was a therapist, bro. <laughs> how's how's big man come and telling me that he's thinking of divorcing his wife, bro? Bro, how is, uh, bro? <laughs> Let's talk about, bro. Oh, bro. Conversations you hear bro. at the barbershop. Go on. I can't. That's gee, that's a violation. No, of no, GDPR. you can't. Do stuff. <laughs> <laughs> but I've heard some stuff that I wish I did. Yeah. You know, you know what I mean? Why are you telling me people this, bro? Are <laughs> I'm, people are oh, I've got there. People are offloading on me. I'm like, damn, bro. No, has anyone and just I, shed like, a tear? Huh? Has anyone just shed a tear? No, I, maybe close. Like, you know, them was where the music paused by itself. And then we're <laughs> just, we're just, we're just, we just continue just talking. And then it's just like, damn. And then, you know, it's after like, bro, I can't lie. This trip is free, bro. Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? You just saw, you just yeah. saw whatever you got going on, bro. One's an X Factor. He's giving us a yes because of their sub story. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> bro, like, a, like, nah, because that's so true. Because even the first barber shop I ever went to was a Jamaican guy. Shout out Marlon. Mm. He had like men there as well. Because he was like, a, like maybe he probably wasn't a man. Maybe because I was young, I, I perceived him to be like a man. He probably was in his thirties, the age I am now. So mm. back then, he was like cutting hair. And these people were tell, talking about how they're cheating on their wives, how they have another girlfriend, how their girlfriends came to their wives, and their wives told them to fuck off. Mm. And I'm just here, and they're telling me that you shouldn't have one girlfriend, that <laughs> like you should always be the one in power, you should pay for everything so she can't leave you. And you're just hearing all this, and you're like, yo, this is this. That sounds toxic, like a you know? general day in the shop. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like a no, it sounds like a no. I think, I think I'm like yesterday. <laughs> that sounds like yesterday. No, no, we'd be having like mad topics. I can't lie. I can't lie if there was mics. Some of us so, can oh, can't I, I can't lie. But like, it's all like opinion based. Yeah. Know? At the end the, of the day, it's all opinion based. Did, did that come into your mind when, because like obviously in a, in a shop, you got you got the PlayStation, you've got the um, pool table and all that. Mm. You because obviously you know when we watch a lot of TVs like the barbershop is the hub of everything yeah, that happens. It's literally that a movie called Barbershop. Yeah, where literally. Where I've never watched home. that movie. You know, it's it, it, it literally what we're talking about. It's like mm. because they build a community for people in that neighborhood where the people can go talk, offload, and be themselves and talk mm. about sports. Now they want to close down that barbershop and he has to fight to keep it open for his community. Mm. That's but, the movie. Basically. But my question was like. It was that a thought in your head of like I want this place to be the place that's popping? Obviously, I don't want too many niggas just sitting around because the shop will get crowded mm-hmm. and too many niggas in one place for too long. Shit happens. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Was that a thing you replaced? Is was that a thing in your? Was that a thought process in your oh, head? Oh yeah, definitely. When you were thinking about like, all right, cool. How do I create the vibes? How do we? Do I make the place that people just want to come? People feel comfortable. People want to chat about whatever is going wrong and all the kind of shit. Like, how do you actually do that, or is it just something that? happens it's just something that happens obviously so a lot of the boys used to come to me let's let's just talk about dundalk now because i feel like i haven't gotten with the community in drada yet because i'm not from drada but let's just talk about dundalk i was there like maybe a few years before i opened up the shop so again i was known around the college once i started cutting hair at home started getting known around the community i brought that community into into the shop with me and so like for example four lads would come like all mates would come in for their haircuts in the house now they'd come into the shop and then they're, you know, but they're not just sitting around anymore. There's a pool table for them. There's a PlayStation for them. There's music playing for them. Now they're on Snapchat. We have a filter on Snapchat. No, just a location filter. But I was very happy when we got that. Because yeah, I'm yeah, like, yeah. you know No, I mean, these little things actually make such a difference. Bro, that's branding. That's, that's yeah. huge branding. Exactly. Yeah. So, like, you know, they're recording now on Snap. Other guys are coming through. I don't really have much of an issue. Anyone waiting around. Because it's going to generate income one way or another. Like, maybe they're thirsty. They want to get something from the vending machine. Mm-hmm. Buy something from the vending machine. Or maybe they're chilling around. Oh, you know, I actually need a do-rag, you know. Get a do-rag. And like, ah, fuck it. Let me do it. Anyone doing walk-ins, let me get a quick cut while I'm here. You know, that type of way. And once no one's um, a hassle, then it's like it's no problem at all. And I like that community vibe. I like having a busy shop, you know. I like conversations flowing. I like people talking. I like, you know, hearing people chat shit. I just like, you know, it's, it's like it's a good feeling. You get me? And it's a thing where... In Ireland, for in terms of entertainment for black people, there's fuck all to do. If you're doing anything, it's in Dublin. Facts. If you're doing anything, <coughs> any bit of enjoyment, it's in Dublin. Mm. There's not even a black owned nightclub. And I'm not, I'm not talking about Vela. Vela, Vela, Vela is not black Vela's owned. Vela's some shots fired. No. <laughs> <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Like, it's a nice venue to do your thing up, but black 
owned yeah. like nightclub in Ireland, no one has taken that step yet. I can't wait to see the first person to take that step. But because that void hasn't even been filled in Dublin yet, it's not gonna get filled in Dundalk anytime That's soon. Point, yeah, so yeah. at my yeah. shop is a place for you know, for black people to kind of like congregate and just you know what I mean vibe yeah. out you know re- respectfully. But yeah. yeah. That's a good point because even like if it's a concert, if even within our own community, everybody want to want to put something on, they're gonna put it on. And yeah, because that's what most even though there's like a black community in Dundalk, nobody's saying like, "Well, let's do a podcast show in Dundalk." Mm. It's like, what are we gonna do? It? Nah. We have to do it because no, I know again because in other place, obviously in other countries, if they, we could do it in Manchester, we could do it in Liverpool, we could do it in Leicester. Yeah, it's the same with like London. studios. If you yeah. want to record music, go straight to Dublin. There's a lot of artists yeah. in Dundalk that want to like you know make music, but ugh, going into Dublin. Yeah. And studio time and yeah, it just makes it, it very expensive. It's, it's, it just makes it very expensive and very like time consuming. You know, what I mean, I feel like in Ireland there's just a real gap in the market for mm. so much things. Close, like, close. yeah, we're obviously so on Vision things. Lab right now. Shout out Vision Lab, and even the boys have said themselves they want to do something more north because, mm. like you were saying, Tommy Tommy Tomato's on the pod. It's like he has to do that drive to like yeah, drum yeah, beat every single time he wants to record or put music mm, out. Mm. And I get it. Some people it might be discouraging, or they might not mm. have the access to a car where they can. If you're 17, you want to make music. To exactly, come to come here, here all the way. It's more difficult, but if you exactly. have something more local, you can jump on a bus and. I have a ro- I have a room in the Dundalk shop. The Dundalk shop is actually quite big, so we have the ground floor entertainment hub, and then it's like a kind of like a P shape. So the entertainment hub would be like where the pool table and the PlayStation is, and then the kind of um, vertical shape would be like where the stations are. Then through the door upstairs, we have our um, hair salon. Mm-hmm. So hair salon studio. So that's where the hairstylists do their thing, you know, male and female hairstyles. Then there's a room to the left that no one really goes to. It's just a storage room. It's a huge room. There's two sun beds in it that were left there. My landlord said I can do whatever I want with them. And I just keep the bins there and it's just a mess right now. But I'm thinking of turning it into a recording studio just because to encourage more people to, yeah. you know so what I mean? So you're telling me I can get my hair braided, I can get it trimmed, <laughs> and I can run it, and I can run it. Bro, all the way to vision lab. You know, that's only close because you, you, you know, you know, you know. At, at that point, yeah. At that point, instead of charging for everything individually, just this is look no, bundle deal. Eight, 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 eighty a month, <laughs> eighty hundred a month. You get a subscription. You get hair braided. Get hair cut. I, I might, I might finally drop the clippers and pick up the mic. Look, what, what, what I actually want to do. <laughs> Jordan's been saying this for a while. He's going to drop one sixteen one day. <laughs> if, the, if the podcast ever gets to like a big, big level, yeah. drop to sixteen bars. Yeah, yeah. Like, and to be honest, the stakes are low because if I rap now, they be like, he's trying to be a rapper. I'm not, I'm not trying to be a rapper. I'm just yeah. trying to put 60 yeah. out. And they're like, it. look, he paid for studio time for this, but it's like, no, I own the studio. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but um, yeah, yeah. I was going to ask about um, customer service, right? Mm. Because for me, yeah, barber shops and customer service, Jesus fucking Christ. Like, there's one barber shop in Dublin that I'm never going back to. Caesars. Nah, not even. <laughs> What's called? No. Yeah, I'm, also, yeah, 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 also anyway. I'm never going back to Caesars because Mo's not there anymore. <laughs> Mo's not there anymore, bro. bro. Oh, Mo, oh, no, Mo, Mo did us all dirty, Mo man. Did us Mo, dirty. if you're watching this, yeah. <laughs> my, guy, my guy said he's going to America, yeah. He'll be back in like a week or two. You got that, you got that yeah, text yeah. as well, yeah? That was before COVID. Bro. <laughs> <laughs> Mo was never coming back. back. Like, oh. After a while, we just had to all accept that Mo's never coming back. affect the whole country? Because I've had this conversation with loads of people, bro. bro. When, when I finally came back to like Dublin or whatever mm. and I was like oh where can I get my hair cut actually I even have a story about one guy that came to Galway and he said he was a barber I let him cut my hair this guy fucked it up bro <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah they were like go to this shop they even said go to Mo shop it's not even it's not even Mo that it's owns like, the shop it's not even Mo that owns the shop <laughs> like, go it's Mo crazy. shop and if Mo let Mo cut your hair don't let anybody else cut your hair mm. so that's how that's how but the, just word of mouth well, that's, that's exactly of, that's exactly what I heard as well yeah. go to From the shop everybody. and let Mo yeah. everybody was go, like well, my boy was living in town at the same t- at time as well Mo I've, I've never been to Mo's personally but I've heard about him like yourself again Bro. and again and, and again this, the thing about Mo is yeah Mo will give you the same cut but he doesn't use sprays all of that he just oh. <laughs> trim your hair and that's it and it's the same thing just every single every time every single time like, sharp I love the consistent and it was 8 euro yeah. Yes. Yeah. I paid 30 euro now. He was eight. <laughs> Let's talk to me about this, yeah. Let's yeah, we we'll get customer this. service. Let's start customer service. How uh, do you like Oh, uh, we have great customer service. Like we've had so much positive reviews. Our boxy on both shops right now is 4.9 and it's pissing me off because I needed to get Mine that. Was five. At five. It has to be that five. And it's just from like one review. It's so unfair. We have like 250 <laughs> good reviews. One, there, but there's one always one-star review. One person that's hate. Why did one, you put the one-star? One, one one-star review. Why did you do that? Why did you do that? I can't remember did what. Did he put a comment? Was. He left a comment, and it was just something like, "Didn't like the haircut," 
and it was too expensive or so, something like that. I have to, actually, I've done, I'll give you guys a review. I haven't done it. Yet. And I was just kind of like, oh, bro, talk to us. You know what I mean? If you don't yeah. like the haircut, we're very big on that. Like, oh, is everything good? You happy with that? You know what I mean? When lads walking, hey, guys, how are you doing? Are you booked in or walking in? Like, we're, we're, walk, uh, we're walking or we're booked in. What time are you in for? Uh, two o'clock. We're just a bit behind schedule, but we'll get you on after him. You're yeah. up next with him after him. Yeah. You know what I mean? We, we like to communicate with our clients when they walk in. But it's not that they walk in and we're just sitting there. You know, cutting hair, not and talking. I'm waiting to an hour. My appointment was at half six. You haven't exactly. talked to me since. No, yeah, exactly. Like if if, explain, if, yeah. if you walk into the shop, I'm like, bro, I'm badly behind schedule. Yeah, no, it, you that's can happened. Leave yeah. and come back. You yeah. know, I'm so sorry about that. You know that type of way. Yeah. So yeah, like our, our customer service is good. Like we have good. We'll talk about prices now, because again, the first time I came, you said during the pandemic, especially, you said you could have been charged and like people, you could have been. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You could. You said you could have been, but then you you have a settled price now. Is there something that's based on? Is that just market value? Just market value, like right now, I, I like I recently did like renovations to my Dundalk shop, so I would have liked to up my price. But then I was like, damn, if I up my price, I'm officially the most expensive barber in the town based off of everyone else's prices. Mm-hmm. We charge 27 for a haircut with beard, 23 for a regular haircut for adults, 20 for teens, which is quite expensive for teens. Yeah, you said 20- you hate you hate doing teens. No, you no. hate doing kids. You said I do I hate doing kids. <laughs> I, I hate doing kids. Yeah. No. <laughs> you said this on the little part. Bro, yeah, like yeah, yeah. You said I'm yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> with your one head because that's a conversation I have like with my with my missus. I'm like. But the time the, the kid is four, I'm gonna give him their coat, and uh, she's like, "Relax." And, uh, and she heard you say it on the get to Jesus. Like, yeah, you know? yeah. Barbers it's, are saying you can't. It's, it's not the it's not the most fun part of the job because kids are cheaper and harder to do. So it's just kind of like, why are we charging mm. less? But you just have to go with what everyone else charges. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. So I can't really up my prices till everyone ups, ups their prices. Price. Like you see in Dublin, thirty euro for a haircut is standard. Yeah, because that's what everyone charges in Dublin. Yeah. You know what I mean? Dundalk, it'd be like the likes of 20 to 25. So I charge like 23. Maybe I'd up it to 25 in Dundalk kind of but thing. But, but when you yeah. started, how much were you charging at that time? Uh, what, when I started the shop? When or? you started like saying, let me start cutting people's hair, like in the shed or your mom's kitchen? In the shed, I was I mean, charging. Yeah. I was I, I did this thing where I always charge below the market price. Okay. So I get people in initially with the price of our haircuts. And once you see the quality... Yeah, they're willing, then to they're, they're willing to pay for more. Yeah, they're, 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 they're yeah but at, at what point does the fact that you're Manny the Barber come into play? Like, you're not the same. Like, I know in Jordan or Underdog or whatever, you might be, you could possibly the mo- be the most expensive, but there's a reason. Like, you've mm-hmm. you spent years building this brand. You've spent years people trusting you, building your clientele. <laughs> no, look, no, 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 I, I went from I went from five euro to seven euro yeah. to ten euro yeah, to twelve to fifteen to twenty to twenty five. Now I'm on thirty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and thirty five out of office. Yeah, oh, yeah. um, well, well, you I'm like to do it last minute as well. Yeah, that's, that's because this thing is booked every fucking <laughs> like <laughs> no like it booked Planning a week ahead. Like I know yeah, I need my hair Sometimes I forget. Weeks. Like yeah, you get what I'm saying. Like yeah. I forget, and I'm just like, oh shit, I haven't even booked a trim, and I'm going out on Saturday. Mm-hmm. So then now Friday, yo, is it? You got any cancellations? Because yeah. <laughs> you alternate as well, so I have to be like more organized. Like, I don't know what day is going to be in Drada, what day is going to be in mm, mm, uh, Yeah, yeah, to yeah. My hair, thing so is messy. You have to just think in advance that day is going to be there. But yeah, so at, at what point does does all of the hard work and the branding and the fact that you franchise and all of that come into play? My like, thing is, maybe it's just a thing where I'm a bit <sighs> scared to like, I, I don't like to get greedy when it comes to business. I feel like that's how I've made most of my money because yeah, I yeah. don't get greedy. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So I feel like Obviously, I take into consideration everyone's livelihood. Not everyone makes what I earn. So my prices could turn someone away from getting their haircut off me, even though they really, really like getting their haircut off me. Mm -hmm. And the fact that you really like getting your haircut off me makes me happy as well. I know there comes to a point where I shouldn't really be caring about that anymore. But it's just kind of like, I'm just kind of taking everyone's, the economy into consideration. You know what I mean? Everyone's economy into the consideration. And uh, is it fair? Some people are saying it is fair for you to yeah. up your prices, but I'm just a bit hesitant. Like, like I always hear stories of people like closing down business, and I can't fathom it. Like, that's my worst nightmare. Like, even the way you said your mom you used to own a hair salon, mm-hmm. uh, uh, I can't even imagine how she go about closing down business. And I don't want the factor of me closing down businesses because I got too greedy and decided to bump my prices, and things changed now and stuff like that. So I just kind of focus instead of upping my prices, getting more clients in. It could be wrong. Like, I might switch it that way because I know, like, for like Izzy, he focuses on opening his prices and reducing his clientele mm-hmm. whilst making more money and working less. And that's smart, you know mm-hmm. what I mean? But I don't work by myself. I have yeah. a shop. So if I'm not available, these guys are eventually going to go to my other barbers 
and stay within my shop. You know what I'm trying to say? But I but the thing is, I, yeah, I feel yeah, like yeah, you, your your price inevitably is gonna raise. Maybe not everyone wait, else's wait, price. What's wrong with this guy? No, wait, yeah, listen, listen <laughs> I'm just trying to encrypt the private. I'm open up, open the Jordan. No, just, just, just what's good with up, this guy? up, just Jordan's price. <laughs> just Jordan's price. Yeah, uh, <laughs> like, this, this is a rich man right here. <laughs> hey man, hey man, hey man, hey man. No, but like, because, because the thing, because the thing is right. Like, even when I ask, like, are you more expensive to book in your shop? Is because your time is more valuable. Mm. Do you get what I'm saying? Like that hour that will take you to go to Jarda or Dundalk or whatever is more valuable because like you've got there's a billion shit that you could be doing right now. Like sure. oh, like even with like let's even say with a uh, fucking with with your course. Like mm. everybody that knows the real money is in is in training. Education, that's where that's where yeah. the education is where the real money is. Yeah. Do you get what it I'm is, saying? Yeah. And it's kind of like said, he said this to it's kind of like all right, cool. I can once have you, a whole once t- you do it correctly, like time for money. Like I, like I, if you have a course and you don't have enough students doing it, then you'd be better off. Like, you'd make more money just working your regular shift mm-hmm. than actually teaching that course because the course is, a, like, very time-consuming. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, it is. But it is, yeah, it is the big but factor. Once, yeah. But, like, because what's it's called, if you, if you charge 200 euro per person and there's six people in the course, that, that's it. You've made, you made yeah. what, a back, a, yeah. a back two? Whatever. You've made, you've made that already. Do you get what I'm saying? Yeah. And it's kind of like, it's going to get to a point where, like, you have two shops already. There's going to be a third. And when the third is there, it's going to be like, all right, cool. Do I actually have time to cut hair? And if I if I don't have time to cut hair, I could, yeah, cool, I'm making 25 euros here, but that hour I could be setting up my course or that hour I could go check on the other shop or that hour I could do whatever. So I feel like it's almost inevitable that yeah. your prices are going to have to go up. I, I, you're right. I just because <laughs> <laughs> no, no, he, he's, 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 he's right. right. He's fitting, but he's right. Just because, but I just feel like when that comes, then I'll do it. I feel like yeah. I'm managing now. Mm-hmm. Things are okay now. I don't want to get too greedy now. I'm still growing the second shop. Yeah, yeah. Like yeah. we've only been open since December last year, mm-hmm. so you know I'm still growing the second shop at the minute. So once that time comes, then I will consider up my prices and kind of you know yeah. seeing who sticks. And I've around. said it to you, uh, uh, like uh, just. Even me, if I wanted to go, by the time I get back to Barbara again and drive home, that petrol, yeah. anyways, yeah. Yeah, and the time I'm wasting. So give me the green light. The, what? <laughs> yeah. Give me the green light. <laughs> to increase everybody else's prices, keep on the same. Put your game on charges. We put your game right there. So I do understand because even I know you're thinking of like you might push clientele away, but mm. people, maybe like maybe the older people that they like convenience they like what mm. works for them people would pay that extra fiver if True. they don't have to go but the that's the distance. thing my main target audience is not like older people it would be like the younger yeah. crowd that's yeah. why i put like the places like i wouldn't say i have a gents barbershop i have like a community barbershop for like younger yeah. people because i want because you see that the younger people yeah they're with you for years you could get a job to america like you know what i mean like and you like a job of you're a lifetime gone. you couldn't turn it down you're gone i've lost a client yeah. But you see, these guys are in primary school. Like they still have there. secondary school to do. And even if they're they, uni, when they come back. When they come back, back or if bro, they do uni yeah. within town. If you build that loyalty. Bro, if you build that loyalty, you have clients for it. You don't even have to chase clients anymore. You just have to do it on rotation at that point. So that's my target audience. That's why I'm very cautious when it comes oh, to pricing around them. You know what I mean? Just to keep them there, keep them happy, keep them... Bro, oh, student discount, bro. That's what that's what that's what, yeah, that's what yeah, they're for. Like, yeah. Yeah. At the end of the day, because it's like... Price discrimination. Oh, see, look at me using my degree. Price discrimination. What's called older people because obviously they make more, charge them more, charge them more, and then the younger people obviously because they're in uni. Student discounts. Bring, yeah. bring, bring, your, bring your student. Yeah, your we, student yeah we, we having student discounts as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. nah, but like it's cold, man. Like, mm. question is, does does your ambition ever scare you? Because you had a shop for like a year and a bit, and then you decided to fucking Bam, open an open shop. shop. And you're yeah. probably gonna open one in Dublin. You've alluded to because because it it's kind it's kind of crazy because when you think about it, yeah. Mm-hmm. It's actually absolutely insane within the span of what four years you went from having it as a hobby to bang one shop, two shops, and having clientele all, all over the place. Yeah, like it's it's crazy when I think about it. Like a lot of people say to me, one of my friends came into the second shop and she's just looking around and she's like, I was like, What are you looking at? She's like, Are you not deep in the come up? Like, and she was like, um, What did she say? Start of 2021, you were cutting at home. Um, October, end of October 2021, you opened your first shop started december 2022 you opened your second shop like this is nuts and i was just kind of like yeah like it's actually like again i haven't really taken time to process it just because i have to just keep it afloat but i'm happy with the progression i've made i feel like i did like jump the gun with the second shop i feel like i did kind of open it a bit early because things in dundalk weren't 100 percent; they were consistent but that's one thing that's a there's no better educator than trial and error to be honest because that's what i've learned now so before i open the next shop 
once things are steady in Drada, which they are now, doesn't mean doesn't give me an excuse to go and open the next shop because mm. I things were steady in Dundalk, so I left Dundalk and Dundalk came falling down, and then I had to build Drada up as well. And at the start of opening both of the shops, it was nuts. It was insane. Like I was making more money with just one shop in terms of overheads and money coming in. I was making money just owning one shop than owning the two of them. You know what I mean? So it was a thing where now once I open the third shop, that's when both of these shops can function with me hands off. You know what I mean? When working becomes a choice for me, which it always <coughs> will be because I like working. I like cutting hair. I cut hair to practice as well. Like I'm practicing every day when, when I'm cutting hair. So, but once it becomes an option for me, like a choice, like like now on Tuesday, I have to work in Drada because one of my barbers isn't available. He has a thing going on. That's cool. So I have to work there. But like once it comes to a point where I don't have to work there, that's when I'm going to look towards opening the next shop. You know what I mean? Or mm -hmm. my plan is, because I do plan on opening another shop um, next year. Um, I'm in talks with someone. Basically, it's going to be like my first hands-off shop. You know what I mean? They're going to do everything. Like, I, I'm going to do everything. They're going to run the shop. Okay. And I'm, so I'm going to see what that's like. That's a different venture that I'm going into now. I don't expect as much money from it at all because I'm not working there at all, but mm -hmm. it's hands-off. So it's passive income. So I'm going to see what it's like, to be honest. So but franchising. You're franchising. Yeah, yeah. I'm franchising, basically. I'm mm -hmm. getting How old are that. you? That sounds like a... Yeah, yeah. Fair play, man. Fair. Congrats on all that. Uh, 23. Jeez. Yeah. And that's why I asked, do you, does, does your ambition ever scare you? Because, like, you know, sometimes I actually do look at the people that they get a 9 to 5, they get their little 30K a year with, like, their, what, 20 holiday days, and they're content. Yeah. I wish I was that person sometimes. Because life is so much harder when you're thinking... Yeah, cool. I'm doing well, but I could be doing more. Yeah, yeah. Like if you, ever, if you can't say contentment, that? but I, I get, it's about finding the balance, though. Yeah. And it's if I find the balance of like where I am now is like we're, we talked about the point. It's like I, if you told me the five years ago I'll be making this much money, I'll be driving this car. Da, da, da. Yeah, let me actually be in that moment. Like, yeah, this is also a moment of contentment. But mm. in the next five years, if I could do this in five years, imagine what I could do in another five years. Mm. So it's, it's like I get to that side and I get that side. It's I was like, I just have to find what is the balance because i do that sometimes i sit in my house and i'm like you know what i, I got the gaff I, mm. I got the the woman I, i've got the job it's like i am happy but then i was like what now in five years how do i then elevate from this what am mm. i saving towards why do i keep money aside from and yeah. why do i do all of this for yeah still have to find that balance but what did you say um does my ambition scare me no because i think everything i do is realistic that's one thing i always say mm. to people i'm not a dreamer like i'm you know what I mean? I'm I'm a realist. Like I'm is it though? Huh? Is it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Think about it. Actually, think about <coughs> it. Um, Ask yourself three years ago: Would you think it would be realistic for you to own two shops? Own two shops? Um, yeah, yeah. yeah, okay. yeah. Like, like, that like but yeah, let me tell yeah. you what isn't realistic. When I used to like chase the football dream, everybody wanted to be a footballer. Yeah. <laughs> imagine, imagine, imagine! I died off the shops to chase football. Yeah, I'd be nowhere. Look, yeah, yeah, I'd no, be yeah. nowhere. You know what I mean? But. I'm opening the shop. Like, I knew Dundalk was going to bang because at that point when I was opening it up, I was making enough money myself to keep it afloat. So I said, all right, cool. Any other income coming from the other barbers is going to be a bonus. That's how I seen it. And obviously, it turns out more than that. Now it's very consistent. But um, I'm opening a barber shop in a town that's highly populated with African community but doesn't have an African barber shop. Yeah. And you already... Have and a clientele that trusts you because you've been cutting their hair. And it's so not like you're just coming into the what town. I, what I've done is yeah. I've developed a business model and it's still developing that will be able to work in every single county that has that niche. A large population of African people that doesn't have a barbershop. Yeah. Why wouldn't it work? The only thing that would be, the only hard part about what I'm doing, I'll be real, is I like teamwork. Like I don't really have anyone assisting me. Yeah. I do the marketing. I do the setting up of the shop. Obviously, no, I have people that help me set the shop up as well. But I run the business. I do the day-to-days. I do everything myself, bro. So because I do everything myself, things are efficient, but they could be way more efficient. And I'm the type of person, like, if I make money, yeah, but things weren't run well. Let's say I have a good week in the shop, but things were messy, you know, disorganized, you know, maybe got a bad review because of disorganization. I would be pissed off. I wouldn't be happy with that money I made. You know what I mean? I'm more about structure and organization. So that's the hardest part about what I have to do. Not opening shops. I feel like it's a no-brainer. 
I'm going into, I'm setting up shop. I'm, I'm giving you what you need. Why wouldn't yeah, I? Yeah. You know what I mean? Why, why wouldn't I make money? Common sense. Like, it's, it's actually, it's actually common sense. You have the marketing, like, you have the Instagram. So exactly. People trust you and people don't, like, uh, exactly. It's just or repetition or and improvement. So yeah. I'm going to keep improving this business business model when, with, what's it called, with the amount of shops that I keep open because I do plan on opening around the country if I'm being honest. Yeah, like, yeah. yeah, I do. I don't see why not. So you're going to franchise them. Yeah, like, that, that's the plan. That's the aim. I want to start doing it next year. Okay. Maybe at the end of the start of this year. Like, and yeah, just yeah. And let me ask you this: What's the franchise? Because you've built it and it becomes a million dollar in, in industry, f- a million dollar franchise. Amen. amen, amen, amen. So I've been watching a show called like Succession for the last one to six weeks. Mm-hmm. Do you think then you'll just be able to like pass it on to your kids if your time comes? Yeah, that's that's the plan. I don't know, like uh, pass it on to my kids. Um, yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. What, what if your kids like? Nah, bro, I don't want to be no barber, man. Nah, 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 nah. <laughs> <laughs> actually, you know, what? I actually don't want my kid to be a barber. My kid has to be a footballer. <laughs> you couldn't be. He has to. He said, bro, Look, I've got the tools bro, to give you everything you there need. There's so much talented ballers where I'm from. Yeah. But we couldn't get no lifts to train him, man. <laughs> bro, <laughs> we couldn't get no lifts to it's train him. It's only lift to library. Bro. bro. <laughs> even, even that, they tell you to walk. They tell bro. you to walk, yeah, yeah. Like, I'm going to, like, focus, like, put my kid through football because, bro, that's a... But the, see the uh, drive and ambition you have as a twenty-year-old mm-hmm. to say, "Oh yeah, it's a no-brainer to open my to open a shop." I know you you think it's normal, but twenty-year-old most a lot of twenty-year-olds like that's why they just saying like it's not as realistic as you think because mm-hmm. a lot of twenty-year-olds it will scare them to mm-hmm. be like you see it as a no-brainer. Oh, it was, no, 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 no. I was still scared though. Yeah, like I was twenty-one, not twenty, but 20 I, I, I was still scared. I was like, "Damn, like, like this is gonna be because I, I I finished college. Yeah, I got the degree." Uh, thank you, online um, <laughs> <laughs> test, online, online exams. Thank you. <laughs> I got the degree. So I'm just like, okay, what do I do now? Obviously, uh, again, it's still in the back of my mind, but starting to push away about this whole getting a job thing. I'm looking at graduate positions f- um, compared to, again, I'm realistic. I wasn't looking at the, you know, the 60K little ones that yeah. they pay you. Because uh, oh, I, didn't, I didn't do the grades for that one. Yeah. I, I got a tutu around here. I'll be real. You know what I mean? And I'm proud of it, bro. Same, 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 <laughs> I'm happy same. with it. Oh, we're tutu guys. <laughs> yeah, tutu guys. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? So I was like... That's not this episode, by the way. Tutu guys. I was like, ah, 30K a year. You know what I mean? I'm comparing the money. I broke it down week by week, day by day. And I'm like... I'm making that now. I could, I could, I could do that myself, you know. Mm. Where I'm more comfortable. I always compare what you're earning versus how comfortable you are earning that money as well. So I said, All right, yeah, fuck, I'm going to do it. You know what I mean? Even the route to me getting a shop, it was pure luck. It was fluky. I shouldn't have gotten that first shop. It was so jammy. Like, imagine someone that graduated from college, like just graduated, by the way, and all the money I was getting from home, obviously that was under the books. So I, my, um, what's it called? My thing was blank. I didn't, the, the dominoes as well. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah, that was cash in hand. Cash in hand. The last job I worked was like 2018 as a kitchen porter. Oh yeah, so legally so, I'm broke. So legally I'm broke. Yeah. So <laughs> I'm walking up to these realtors like, "Hi, can I have this shop? Who do you got? Uh, I just finished college. Oh, uh, I, I cut her at home. I, I'm good for it. I promise. That, that's basically what I'm saying to them. <laughs> I'm saying that to the realtors. I'm saying that to the bank. They're all just kind of like, this kid is nuts. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So they just push me aside then. One guy just took me in, like, I, I was walking through the Dundalk town, seen the ad through the window, and I was so desperate for a shop at this point because I had a target. I wanted to open up for back to school time because mm, I'm yeah. busy then, so yeah, it would be a good start to the business. Time, yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't hit that target, but I did hit Halloween, thankfully. But remember, I ran into the shop. I was wearing, like, North Face tracky with my hood up and durag on. I was like, is this shop available? The guy's looking at me like, um, I, I, someone is actually looking at it. I could tell he was lying. I just probably intimidated him. I got home, <coughs> I put on my white voice. <laughs> <laughs> I called him saying, I'm interested in the property on 7 Dublin Street. I was wondering, is, is there any viewings available anytime soon? He's like, oh yeah, I can get you in for a viewing to, um, tomorrow. Probably even though it was me. So I went in, I viewed it. And then he's like, so basically, what do you got? I just had a look. <laughs> I, said, I said, look, bro. I got a dream, bro. I said, bro, I showed him my Instagram page. I had all my appointments on an Excel spreadsheet. So I showed him what I was doing the past the year or two. And then he's like, yeah, why not? Fucking bro. <laughs> I, I, was, I was so, I was like, I was like, wait, are, God you, are, are you being for real? I was like, are you being for real? You know, it happens like he, that. Bro. He's like, yeah, yeah, to be honest, like the place has been vacant for three years. Um, oh, come on. You know what I mean? He said, let me ask the landlord. The landlord is even more of a G. I cut his kid's hair till this day. Like, and his kid, if I'm not in Dundalk, his kid will come to Drada. You know what I mean? So, yeah, like, so the landlord was even more of a G, gave me the spot, 
negotiated the rent price like low because the rent price was a bit scary for me. So negotiated it low for the first year to see how I get on. And then now it's at the rate that we were both happy at. And I was just like, wow, this is really like God's plan. Like, yes. you know what I mean? All those other shops that I was getting rejected for, they were even smaller than the place I have now and more expensive. And your location is fantastic. Like, yes. Literally, right. as you're driving into Dundalk, mm. he's right there. Okay. Literally. Like, just there on the he's, left. He's, 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 you're walking distance from the college, which yeah, is perfect. Yeah, literally. So it's just like, damn, this is crazy. So that's, that's how that happened. It was pure fluke. And then obviously with the first shop, I had a strong reference for the second shop. And then everything else is easy from there. I, I, I skipped the hard part. But that initial hard part, for anyone that does want to go out and find a premises and, you know, take their business from home into a, like a shop, it's tough. How are your tough. parents now would it go to be 21 to say, like, I'm not going to go into a nine to five. I did this business degree. Let me actually pursue this. And they, no, you did all the calculations. But we all come from the same background. So how was that mm. conversation? Uh, no, there's a lot of I told you so going on, you know. <laughs> from which there's side? There's a lot from my side. <laughs> <laughs> there's a lot of I told you so going on, you know. It's like, it's really cool. It's like, like, Yo, mom, you know. It's like, yeah. it's like I knew it was going to bang, you know. But, but, but is it different because they had already seen how they much already seen, they They had already seen from the shop, like, mm -hmm. from the shed, like, all right, this is not a joke. Yeah, it's not they like you just me, randomly came saying, You know what I mean? Oh, they yeah, see mom, me come way, home yeah. in cars that, they're like, whoa, like, you know, I have asked them for a second. I was, you know, I was helping them out at home as well, you know. So I was just kind of like, ah, yeah. If anything, my mom pushed me to go for the second shop because I was going through a slight series of rejection as well. And I was like, oh, I can't really be arsed for all of this. But my mom was like, no, you really need to go for the second shop. It's gonna, ups, it's really gonna scale your business. So she really helped me to get the second shop. Like in terms of mentally, she pushed me for towards it. And just stuff like, I remember I needed a van. I'm too young to rent the van. Yeah. So my mom helped me rent the van. You know what I mean? Yeah. So like, there's a picture of my mom literally. I'm in my car, she's in the, like, I'm driving my car, I look in the rearview mirror, like my mom is driving the van behind me. <laughs> you know what I mean? We pull up to the car park and then I hop in the van and she goes home. Like, I'm very grateful mm -hmm. for all of that because I needed the van, you know? So they're very supportive and they're very happy with everything I'm doing. So, yeah. Yeah, no, that's yeah. Crazy. yeah so I think that's, that's everything. Then. No, because, yeah, no, uh, the point I, was, I made, I actually forgot. Because, yeah, I think that's us, you. Yeah, wanna I think that's it. Um, yeah. Anything else? <laughs> <laughs> all right cool that was a ditch all right cool. actually no hold on i think i was on charge of the game this week did you miss a flight again <laughs> nah no nah, but I, i'm i'm booking one for friday and i'm looking look at like because it's an early flight again i don't know i don't know what's been happening recently but i've been missing flights for bands Damn. like and i used to be so good but recently it's just been oh, missing flights is not a joke man yeah but it's not like missing the bus like this is a like yeah yeah you know what i mean the inconvenience is too much it's you too can't much. just wait 30 minutes and then the next bus is here. Yeah, like, exactly. You know, you know the worst part about it? When you pass security, you don't know that, then they lead then you they out and to for you to come do it all over again. Oh, fuck that shit. It's so long. But no, mm. no, nah, nah, I've missed any fights. You got to take the charges to charge the game? No, not this week. No. We got a segment called Charges to the Game. Mm. Anything, any L's you might have taken, anything oh. that might have just been annoying. Did you mind, oh, not to charge to the game, but did you mind see those uh, people fighting off the boat? What happened there? <laughs> fighting <laughs> off the boat? Oh, uh, you know, on Twitter. Mm. Um, no. On Twitter, I haven't been active though. So mm. there, was, there was one black guy and a white guy. So then the black guy started getting beaten up by like a bunch of... A, a, bu a black guy was getting beaten up by a bunch seen of white that. guys. I've seen yeah. it. I've seen it. My guy threw up his hat. Bro. <laughs> next thing you know, black people just start coming out Crazy. of everywhere like the Avengers. That I think that's... Other than that, I tried something to the game. I saw something this week on Twitter. It was actually kind of funny. It says, did you, did, did you guys ever experience racism? But it was actually kind of funny. Yeah, all the time. Uh, it's always funny. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's I always remember walking always funny. through by breaking me and like, like you guys now there's a lot of black people, a lot of us walking and we're just walking and then the white guy walks, he's walking the other the opposite direction. As he walked past us, he just says, who went and spilled all the Maltesers? And then we're just walking and I was like, wait, is, was it? Was it? Was it? <laughs> that was dead. <laughs> that did not bang. That was, that, that did not <laughs> bang. That wasn't even the good ones, bro. <laughs> but other than that, uh, other than that, uh, funny racism. Happens, I seen it happen. Like mm. I saw T on T of on on TikTok saying it's like black people. I miss the old version of black people. You know, black people used to be thugs and used to like be gangsters. <laughs> people used to be afraid of us. Wearing, I see a nigga wearing glasses. <laughs> 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 That's why black people wearing glasses. Niggas in anime shirts and glasses <laughs> and earrings. <laughs> wearing glasses. These aren't the we're, wearing pearls to wear. These aren't the white. <laughs> these aren't the black people I grew up on. No, these are these are the gangsters. Yeah, um, we wrap it yeah up. I got I got okay I got one of two yeah. Um, my wife and I had a threesome mm. okay. or my girlfriend said she faked orgasms with me for the last seven years. Which one do you want as the guest? Wait, wait, threesome as in two girls or two boys? I can't remember which one. In the, it'll, it'll tell me. I think it might have been two guys. Oh, two guys, no way. 
So which one? Which dilemma should you read? My wife and I had a threesome. Oh, which that? Oh, I tell yeah. you, ask me which yeah. oh, situation would oh, I rather. Oh, I have zero interest in having a threesome with another guy. That's not a threesome to me. Yeah, yeah, That's yeah. That's threesome for her. Yeah, but to me, to me, this this just sounds like why am I why am I doing this with audience? Yeah, like yeah, I got to yeah, wait yeah. in line to do what I need yeah, to do. Yeah, no, yeah, fuck yeah, that, man. Nah, fuck yeah. that. But don't read the one. My wife and I had a threesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. All right, cool, 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 cool. Wait, hold on, wait, I just lost it. Um, what the fuck is it? All right, so my wife, forty one female, and I, forty male, had a threesome. My wife and I have been married for ten years. Great relationship that I put down to always us always being open and honest with each other. We'd always say if we had the opportunity for a threesome with another man. Wait, we'd always said, we'd always say that if the opportunity came for a threesome with another man came up, we'd we'd likely go for it. Last weekend, I met a guy at the bar at the hotel and we we're staying in and we ended up in the bedroom. To begin, it was great. I came first and basically watched them go at it for like 20 minutes. <laughs> he had her in positions I ain't never seen before. <laughs> and I know she came at least twice. It didn't bother me at the time, but afterwards, we agreed it was fun and we had no regrets. For the past week, my wife, my wife has had a spring in her step. She's happy. She's confident. Deep down, I know it's because she realizes this. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> All right. Uh, what's going on? Uh, for the past week, my wife has had a spring in her step. She's happy and confident. And deep down, I know it's because she realizes that she can still get the interest of good-looking younger man. Of a good-looking younger man. Yeah, her ego's strong. I, on the other hand, have done nothing but relive the the second half of the night over and over in my head. I've never heard her like that. I've never heard her like she was that night. And I know that I'll never satisfy her like that. I'd love to tell her, tell her how I'm feeling. And I know that she would understand, but I don't want to, I don't want her to feel like she has to start faking and overacting in order to make me feel, ex to feel, to feel good. Essentially. Yeah. I'm hoping that if I say this, my anxiety will fade. Any advice? See the advice I can give you is don't do that shit in the first place. Bro, yeah. it's his own fault. Like, <laughs> and he got outperformed. Another guy, anyways. Do you get what I mean? Is that his wish? In the first like, I can't. I can't. I can't. And he even bro. got outperformed. That's <laughs> you know what crazy. I'm that's it. But also on her part, anything that's novel or new is always more exciting. So, like, if you have a new car or new shoes or whatever, it's always gonna be like. Ah, you love these shoes, but then you realize those other shoes there. You're like, no, actually, no, I actually prefer these better. But mm. it, the minute you yeah. get that novelty, is always yeah. seems like, oh, it's great. But I think still, she'd be like, she might have enjoyed it because it's novel and it's new. Mm. But I don't think she could, she could still get satisfied by her husband. Yeah, like, like what's going like, on? Obviously, it's, it is his insecurity kicking in. Like, yeah, yeah obviously, yeah. She probably, he probably satisfied her fine and everything. Yeah, but yeah. the thing is, yeah, the ego yeah. that is in all of us, not even just men, yeah. of like, couldn't do it. I can't. Like, he better than me. Like, that's why I don't ask stupid things like, oh, am I the best you've ever had? Yeah. Because you don't want, you actually, you only want to hear one answer and it's not 100% that you're going to get that answer. Yeah. Mm. Manny, would you ever ask that question? Am I the best you ever had? Would I ever what? You, would you ever ask a girl, am I the best you ever had? Uh, yeah, but I'd be expecting a lie. Like, I'd, I'd, be, like, I'd be expecting a lie. Don't come and say no. Don't come and say no. Lie to me. Lie to me. <laughs> lie to me. That's why, sir, like, w once you get into this place in life where you realize, don't ask questions you don't want the answer to, Yeah, you your life becomes so much but easier. On that, maybe he honestly, genuinely, sometimes it's like a situation, you genuinely do want to have this threesome and that's what you genuinely want and you go for it like, so even though this podcast maybe i genuinely want it to blow and be big, get good but then it blows and all this fame i have to deal with it and i'm like i don't want this but you wanted the podcast to blow mm. so you wanted the threesome going in there but then i want to happen so yeah, sometimes it's like that's you your think fault. you want it don't get an info don't get someone that is on a different level that you're at how are you supposed to know that you uh, see okay like, see, like this, this thing there's bro, no review bro recognize bro if you look in the eyes more time it's <laughs> <laughs> you can tell if he's a demon or not yeah, bro. Bro, bro, no you boxy review for smart <laughs> for nice <nighttime. laughs> <laughs> no, I, I like I could I I actually I don't like to share as well. So no, no, I, I oh. couldn't do it. But I I also think a lot of people the idea of when they go into something they're fine with it. But I don't I think it's all they just realize afterwards. I don't think it was like he was unsure about doing the threesome. I think he genuinely wanted to and he thought he'd be okay with it. Mm -hmm. It's only once it happened then he's like, yeah, I'm actually kind of bothered by this. Okay, but now in this in this situation here now, what do you do? I think he should express it, says it to her, because I think. She's probably fine with the sex life. They have she's still satisfied, but her ego got stroked. She got a guy that was younger, good looking, made had good fun sex with her, and maybe she thought this wouldn't happen for her anymore. And she just feels like the novelty is new. And I get it. Maybe she can hide her feelings, but I would say express this. If this is what you guys are on, and this is what your relationship was on, 
she'll probably understand because for you for you guys to be like, I want to have a threesome anyways, there's a certain level yeah. of understanding in the first place. But you know what it is though? Like on that level, you don't want to make her feel bad for something that you were fine with. Like you both agreed to it. Now you're going to make her feel shit for having uh, I hear that. something that no, was no, perfectly I fine. That. I, you know what I'm saying? Again, I hear that. It's like, I could be fine with something now going into it and then mm-hmm. once it actually happened, it bothered me. And it's not, it's not your fault. It's, it is my own mm-hmm. feelings. It is my own insecurity. But at the same time, I was like, even forget about the sex. Just minor things could happen and you could think like, yeah, I'm okay with that. Mm. But then I was like, say for example, she was saying, oh, going out again tonight, three nights in four or something. And you're like, yeah, I'm okay. But then she does it, you're kind of like, mm, actually, she hasn't, hasn't been at home and give me time anymore. Mm-hmm. The afterthought of you being okay in one instant, then afterwards, you're not okay with it because she's not spending time with you. You just Yeah, but that's different though because like, it's happened now, yeah. Even yeah. if it's not going to happen again that 20 minutes is still burned in your yeah, brain. Yeah. And you're going to sit there and you're going to relive that. Do you get what I'm saying? And there's nothing that she can do. Like That's what they'll say on Manny's chair and tell him. <laughs> 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 Offload on me. <laughs> At this time, he's a fool. To the begin with, I just time, bro, you're an idiot, bro. <laughs> <laughs> like, you're, you know was, like, you're not under. At this point, do, do you start charging the extra 10 euro if you want to chat to me? <laughs> oh, I might start doing consultations <laughs> or something like you that, know, bro. You know, don't, don't Maybe don't I use that back room to create a private, <laughs> a private station <laughs> and charge an extra tenner for consultations as well. <laughs> Talk to me as well. No, on. Right, what, would you get, what would you tell him? Oh, bro, I tell him... Charge it. Charge it, bro. <laughs> Char- I was about to say that. I tell him to charge it, bro. Like, you're the one that wanted to go and do yeah, the mad yeah. thing. And now, look, you're not happy, bro. And I, then tell I, him, like, maybe part in your game, bro. You know what I mean? And also, if you, can't, if you can't handle it, just leave, bro. Yeah. Because, like, there's... I, I don't think... If it's a thing where, like, uh, afterwards, yeah, if they're continuing having sex and stuff like that, yeah, and sex is calm and all, like, if it's a thing where they don't do it often, like, where they get, like, threesomes, and she doesn't want to have sex with him unless it's a threesome, then you can get over it. Like, you can get over it. Not always, though. That, like, because the thing is, like, hearing about it and seeing it are two different things. Mm-hmm. Like, you can hear about something and get over it. But if you see something... So you don't think it can get over it? I'm not. I'm saying if you can't. Yeah, no, yeah. Because, oh, like, yeah, yeah. like, some people... Because what, what happens with some people, yeah, is that they can't get over it, and then they start taking it out on their, yeah, on yeah, their yeah, babes. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? In that situation, just leave. But if you chat to her and just, like, look... It made me feel. If it made me feel away, maybe from now on we only do three songs with people that need Viagra or something like that, or whatever situation. Do you get what I'm saying? Yeah. But like, but in the thing he says, he said she would understand. He even says in the thing, he said, mm-hmm. like, I want to express this with her, so she understand. Which is what I'm saying. They have a level of understanding, anyways, within their relationship. Mm-hmm. For them to even, I don't get know. I don't know about expressing it, bro. I'll be real. Nah, you, need, you have to express it. When mm, see when you express it, yeah, right. I feel like the girl can sometimes be like, oh uh, yeah. <laughs> Uh, nah, I have that on you. Like, you know what I mean? Like, oh, yeah. Because women are not good people. Like, here. Bro, yeah. women, bro <laughs> it's mean, like, mean. As, as a man, oh, no, nah, this is sounds toxic as shit. But like, <laughs> bro, you don't... We you passed don't, the sounding toxic like, <laughs> 10 sentences ago. <laughs> you don't want to feel too vulnerable. Let women know th- when you're vulnerable. Your, your weaknesses, Because they yeah. feed off of it. Because yeah. women are already, especially if it's a traditional woman, they're already on that aspect of, they're the vulnerable ones that are being taken care of and da 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 So if they catch you slipping mm-hmm. and they have one up on you, that's how they're going to see it. As a man. I got one up on this guy. Yeah, I was, I was watching Shits and Gigs. They were told of like, what's the me- the thing was like, what's the meanest thing a woman have said to you? And then uh, James, the light-skinned guy, alluded to that. And he said, he told, he was vulnerable and open with a girl. And he told him everything. And then when they started, he told him like how he, he couldn't really connect with his family. There wasn't really a loving home. And he expressed this to her. And then he was then giving out to her about how she can be emotionally something anyways. And he says, she says, I'm not emotionally available. It's you not emotionally available because you didn't have this at home. Yeah, see. So she still, she used his own trauma back at him then because he was vulnerable with her. And that. So I understand when you say like, yeah, sometimes you're vulnerable, but some people are taking notes, yeah? They're yeah. taking oh, notes, yeah. bro. They're Cause taking, cause it does depend though yeah, on the no, girl. Because the thing is, a lot of girls, they're like, that's, that's their ammo. Women. That's their ammo. Once, once you get... Of course, it's the it, ammo. Right the heart. Because have you ever noticed when you ask a girl, what do you bring to the table? <laughs> what do they say? Oh, they're stuttering like, they're bare <laughs> stuttering. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. like, do you know what I'm saying? I am the table. Bare, they're bare. It's crazy. I'll, I'll be with my female table. friends. Uh. I'll be like, what do you guys, like, if you have a man, what do you bring to the table? Like, why do you even ask that question? What does that question even mean? They start getting so defensive. I'm like, yo, chill out. I just asked the question. Do you, do you have an answer to it or what? What, what do you bring to the table? Dude, what do you bring to the table? What do I mean? I am the table. <laughs> 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 That's what they'll say. But, but no, I, so I do see angry with that. So I do see that side where some people will be like, don't say anything, don't expose your vulnerability because next fight she'll be like, yeah, well, that nigga fucked me better than you, anyways. 
You have to sign up. You have to sign up. That's, that's how people catch cases. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm it's, telling you. That's how you catch somebody that charge, gonna bro. die. <laughs> no, that, that's the AM. Bro. <laughs> no, because like, no, 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 no. Like, because then that also begets the question because like, I do feel like in, to be in like a successful relationship and shit like that, you do have to be vulnerable. True, you do yeah. have to you give that part. But things. at what point do you, are you like, all right, cool, I'm actually going to be vulnerable with you? Because like, I know for me, I'm closed off for time. Yeah. You're not catching, you're not catching for time. Yeah. You got to be my babes. You got to be, do you get what I'm saying? For you to actually get that part of me. But now it's like, when you start seeing somebody, at what point do you like, because they want you to be vulnerable so you guys can get close. Yeah. But then also, a lot of you guys will turn around and use and throw it back in my face. Yeah. So now because we don't want to be vulnerable to the next girl. And the next girl is like, why are you always so closed off? You, you why said, don't you speak? Do you get what I'm saying? Because the last three girls, I told them how my parents didn't love me. They said that's why I wasn't capable of love. Do you get what I'm so saying? I don't want to talk about this I, anymore. I told, I told it you, to me. You know what I'm saying? I, to, I told you I didn't want to go on a date because I didn't have it. You said we'll pay 50. We can go 50 50. Now and broke. now you're calling me broke. Now I'm a broke nigga. Now, <laughs> now I have a small dick and I'm broke. It's a scam, boys. Don't get scammed. It's a scam. Like, it is a scam. I'm telling you now. Don't get scammed, lads. Like, I see, I see cheaters think clearly, bro. And it's, nah, it's not. Oh, actually, you know what, yeah? Because obviously, being in the barbershop and mm. being around the man, them girls are going to come up. Like, it always does. Like, you As know a guy, don't bring a girl to the barbershop. Jeez. Yeah, the conversation. You're just putting Bro, on as soon as she leaves... <laughs> bro, I, I'm, ah, bro, ah, because don't I, bring a girl to I, the Wait, shop. wait, wait, why are you boy not? Because of the conversation or because the man them she'll see? No, ah, uh, both. Oh. No, uh, okay. Obviously, if you're like, I always like to believe that girls respect their boyfriends and don't. And apparently, it doesn't happen all yeah, the time. Yeah, it's, but it's yeah, nice like I said, yeah. apparently. <laughs> <laughs> apparently, like, you know, nice but like, I'm speaking more of the conversation afterwards. It's like, bro. Niggas is looking at your girl, bro. Like, mm. and this is kind of like, oh yeah, no, it could really happen, but it's like, bro, don't be. Is it? Is it? Don't, don't be exposed. And if, if you know niggas, exposed, they definitely want to find our Instagram right after. Before you left, there's, there's a lot. Yeah, when you were dead, was it, there's a lot of picture. variables. Once you bring your girl to the barbershop, there's a lot of variables at that point. Anything can happen, bro. Yeah, like, also, niggas, you know what I mean? Don't don't let someone skip in your line. That's the AK. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, they used to do it to me all the time when I was younger. I'm traveling next week. That was an excuse. I'm traveling tomorrow. Mm -hmm. I have to go catch a flight. Can oh, I please go ahead? No, I, I, I was I was here before. I just I, came back and I just came back and I used to allow it. But then I got older. I was like, nah. It's like allow you guys. You guys use the same excuse because I'm young. Because mm -hmm. you know we come from. Uh, yeah, when you're older, it's respect, like respect kind of. Yeah. Kind of Wait, did you tradition. were gonna say something before I, I said don't yeah. bring a girl to the shop? Oh yeah, shit. Because obviously, girl, girls' names are coming up. This is coming up. This is coming up. Have you? And like, I feel like as a barber, part of your job description is mind your business. <laughs> you hear loads of things because as, as you know, much as when, you can bro. when you're hearing this per person talk about this girl like it's the love of her life and then you're hearing next man come in and be like oh yeah I was just with such and such and such and such Look at his face. This guy. This guy. It's not my man's love of his life. Do you get what I'm saying? Like I, I just caught her boyfriend's hair because he said he's going on holiday with her tomorrow but you're saying you just you know what? Never mind, didn't it? <laughs> oh, then when you start put two and two together, you're like, wait, is Anigo talking about the same? Okay, never mind. You know, <laughs> you know what? There's, there's, there's some people that are just too connected in this life and barbers oh, are Especially there. like in, in the small community first and then like communities like Dundalk and Jordan, where it's even that small within itself. Mm -hmm. so, so and especially because barbershop is the place where everyone feels like all of a sudden, if you're someone that shut your mouth before, all of a sudden everything comes out of the barbershop. Yeah. Like everything. Everything. It's just because you're hearing so much people talking. You just want to you see, you want add. to join in. You just want to add. That's the trap. Never join in. And because it's like, it's people that look like you and come from that country, so it's easy to get comfortable. There's it's good music very on, easy. pool is being played. Yeah, exactly. It's very chatter, easy. So you're like, Bro, oh, people that aren't your boys now, you feel like you guys are all boys because it's chilly. I've you know? seen people with like alcohol in barbershops. They're just what? chilling there sipping. 100%. Yeah, yeah. yeah I mean, it's, it's yeah. a thing. We don't, obviously, because we have a younger client, you know, I'm the younger <laughs> crowd of, a real, well, younger audience, so we don't really do it, but uh, yeah, no, it'd be, it'd be no, a vibe. People used to bring their own, like they'll come in, bring their own, like, bottle of beer or whatever and they're just chilling there get their haircut leave and they do you know what what's called there's, there's, some, there's some many people barbershops you get you get your haircut you get a beer as well you mm. know you just yeah. chill do your thing but yeah now nah, bro man like also like I'm guessing your your phone book is stacked because when I talk to Izzy yeah, this guy has a this guy has a person for everybody oh Izzy I need a plumber oh Izzy I need someone to do Izzy I need oh yeah yeah bro I got a guy for everything bro yeah, being, being I've, I've got a guy to. for everything like literally who cuts your hair who cuts my one of my barbers OJ okay yeah. oh yeah yeah Mm. I get myself this shape up this morning though, just because obviously. Are you? What's going? Are you? Are you? Ever, are you? Ever, have you ever given a trim that's just dead? 
That song, that song is just like. Oh yeah, last week. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like you're probably at a stage now that what a detriment is to you yeah, is what is good to, so, good to, to someone people. else. But obviously I know like... But I'm uh, talking about where the person is like... Damn, like you fucking... Your money. Uh, <laughs> not that they've told me anyways, but I don't think so. I don't think so. Nah. Not like I haven't, it's been years since I've completely fucked someone up, mm. but like trends that aren't of standard, it happens, bro. You know, like yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, everyone has a bad day at the office, you know what I mean? Mm. So, yeah, no more though. If you was here, you can bro, see him no, <laughs> I've never had a bad day with Mo. I've been, bro, bro Mo has given me the same haircut for years. <laughs> it was uniform, it was routine. You just <sighs> that guy, man. No, I, think he, I don't even know what. He has a chicken. In a, in yeah, in no, America. we have to go see his, his, his I think his babes is oh, in America, okay. yeah. and then he went for a trip and just never came back. Never came back. Yeah, right. and kept telling us three weeks. Mm-hmm. Mo, if you're listening, people are missing you. And if you're here, August 26th, <laughs> Charger Karaoke, pull up with a friend, come pull up, battle mm. on the podcast. AJ said he's going to perform. You might have backup dancers. That's what he's saying. So mm. if you got this far, and yeah, pull up, Manny, plug your socials here. Manny the Barber. Manny underscore the Barber on Instagram and MTB Cuts underscore on Instagram. Make sure to follow that. Ireland's leading multicultural barbershop. Yeah, there you go. go. And Manny, if you ever want to come and promote anything or with the boys, just uh, give me a text. I'm, a, I'm at your barbershop. Um, but if you just one time, you said you have a lot of thoughts you want to get off your brain and want to come to pod with us, you're always welcome as well. If definitely. you lot made it to the end of this podcast and you didn't like anything that we said today, well, we can charge it. <laughs> Thank you for charge. listening. Nice one, guys. Oh, man. Uh,